I know you guys are you're like you're alive, <laughs> but I haven't said my thing yet. I know. So it's, we wait, maybe we get we get a few people in and see. And it gives me a second to start the audio version of our show, I always, as I call it, because we record on Anchor as well, which is Anchor by Spotify. So that's where you can find just the audio version of our show on Spotify and all that good stuff. Uh, Spotify and iTunes and uh, wherever podcasts are available, pretty much everywhere. So and that's where that is. So we'll give, we'll give it a second, guys. Guys, we were looking at another show here. We're not we're not afraid to say it. we're looking at another show, Geek Out SA. They're live on YouTube. Uh, they have a substantial following. Um, we wanted to go on there and say hello to them because they go live every Friday night as well. And so um, it's a pretty cool show. It's a husband and wife team, I believe. Uh, they are. I I know that. Uh, uh, the wife is an educator, uh, I believe, but i um, not sure about her husband. Whatever, but um, And they also have a producer. So it's a, it's a really cool little show. So if you guys haven't uh, checked it out, uh, check it out. Uh, Nene in the house. What up, Nene? Man, are you still at South Padre Island and Corpus Christi at the same time? I totally, I saw that dangerous angel out there. <laughs> and uh, what about that Chica, bro? That was let's see a little bit more of that, man. I don't want to. I know that might be your girl, man. Not trying to, not trying to be offensive or whatever, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Nene is definitely a batch. Uh, Steve in the house. Cheers, Steve. Hey, Nene, when are you gonna have a beer with this? You know what? We need to get Angel to have some drink. I bet Angel drinks uh, apple puckers and uh, Mad Dog. You know, she seems like the type. He, she seems like that type. So yeah. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. We're letting y'all roll in. Cheers, Steve. Cheers. Um, but let's get us going on the audio. What is up, Friday Nighters? Welcome back to another episode of Just Another Friday Night. I am one of your two hosts. I am CM Chuck. Alongside me, as always, the unbreakable Adamantium Adam. Hey, guys. What's up? We call them double A around here. A few people already rolled in. We're trying to start the live now on the Facebook a little bit earlier. It's awesome that Nene's joining us already. Yeah, man. Nene in right out the gate. He was uh, beaching yeah, it up. Yeah. He's got some great new merch. Guys, if you know uh, Nene, go uh, find his angel merch. Uh, so dangerous. And uh, ready to catch these hands. <laughs> I love that, bro. That's, that's some great stuff, man. Uh Nene, I want to get in another video, man, but I don't want to be Chuckles anymore. I want a new role. Can you make me up a new role? Can I be like a cop or, I don't know, a cowboy or something like that? I got a cowboy hat. Yeah, and Reno, so, yeah I could be a sheriff, you know what I mean? No, you know, guys, just play like a like a, a regular character. I, I need to diversify my acting, Nene, so he <laughs> help me out here, man. Uh, but who we got in the house? Uh, again, the man himself, Nene, king of, king of TikTok, and he also self-proclaimed today king of booty shorts. He says no one wears booty shorts better than him, the dangerous booty shorts. So we will not uh, deny you that. Uh, I would say Chuckles would go for it. Maybe we should do a Death of Chuckles video, uh, Nene, and then end that character and bring in a new character that I could yeah. be, maybe. So I don't know. Maybe the fans might not like that. We'll yeah. see what's up. Uh, Anthony Barrera in the house. What up, Anthony? Anthony, they call you Tony? Can I call you Tony, man? Like Tony Soprano? Uh, you probably tell me you hate that or something, right? <laughs> uh, of course, Steve is here in the house. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, Anthony says, shout out to my boy Flo Hernandez. I don't know, Flo. Uh, are you messing with me? <laughs> I'm always missing a joke. But I am really happy to see Nene back working with Jerry Hernandez. Uh, Jerry, 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 super funny guy. Uh, great, great behind the camera man for show. So uh, he says, uh, yes, be in a Walmart prank video with me. Just be yourself. Okay, yeah, I'll do it. Well, I probably ruined the prank right now but by saying it out loud. But uh, hit me up in the DMs, Nene, and we'll see what we can do, bro. I'm always happy to help out and star on one of your videos. I wear my own uh, podcast T-shirt so I can promote my promote our, promote me in Double A here when we get a chance. So, uh, oh, he's a comedian from Dallas. Okay, cool. All right, all right. Tony B. I'm gonna call you Tony B. Anthony. Uh, Tony B. Says he's a comedian from Dallas. Flo Hernandez. Cool, but I'll check out his stuff if he's on YouTube. Let me know where to find him. Uh, I always love some good comedy. Uh, they've been having some open mics at a place we both like, mm -hmm. Tandem. Yes. Uh, Tandem over off of um, shit. The address escapes me, but you know, look up Tandem. Well, Luchador guys. too. Yeah, Luchador yeah, also. Karaoke. Yeah. Karaoke stuff, guys. Are and they friends. have a comedian. Yeah. Uh, night mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah, they, 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 I don't know if it's back yet, but they did have, they had it back there. Uh, they had it back in the before pre COVID, 
And it seems like we're working our way out of the woods. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. And Jesse's even looking. I think he's posted a few times. He's looking for acts uh, to come and uh, perform at his places. So yeah. Hey, and anybody out there that knows a place that has acts, uh, let me know that if they're looking for acts, people to come perform. Because uh, you guys heard me a few weeks back uh, talk about my good friend Rob Kubis' new album came out, and I bought it on uh, on iTunes. Uh, let me give you guys the name here, only because it's just escaping me at the moment uh, as my brain goes. Uh, King's Indian, K-I-N-G apostrophe S, King's Indian by Robert Kubis, K-U-B-U-S. Great, great, great uh, nine-track album on iTunes. I listened to it today uh, again as I just loved it. It's such a, a, a unique sound. It would go perfect in a coffee shop. I sent him over to Jesse oh, uh, nice. so that he could okay. hopefully g either get over at Tandem or over at Luchador. But if you guys know any other venues that are booking people right now, let me know so I can let Rob know because he's trying to get in there with I think a four piece band, um, and we'd love to we'd love to help him out. And we can say you guys played a part. The Friday Night Faithful and the Friday Nighters played a part in getting uh, getting them booked. So, uh, what else we got in comments there, Double A? Uh, Steve wants to know what we're drinking tonight. Uh, my lovely and wonderful podcast partner was kind enough to get. He loves Dos Equis, and I love the Dos Equis salt and lime because it's all the work's already done for me. So we're, I'm that's what I'm having, and you're doing your – I'm doing dose. He's doing so, the dose usually. Yeah. So we're re representing all, all the you, Steve? I almost came close to buying Paps because he actually had it at Walmart. Ooh, nice. I almost came close, but I was like, you know what? They actually have this on on tap. So <laughs> I owe double A some beer here so you guys know. You don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, but Steve, what are you drinking? Tony B, are you drinking? What are you drinking? Is uh oh is and Nene when he drinking? got back with you, he goes, check him out. He's on Facebook. Flow her Okay. I will definitely check him out. Man, I love comedy, mm -hmm. man. Big big time. You can find me on my personal YouTube uh doing maybe one or two uh, you call it a set and I did terrible but <laughs> but I tried it. You know what I mean? You gotta get out there. So, uh, yeah, Steve, what are you drinking? Tony B, are you having any beers, man? What are you drinking? Uh, Nene, I know you probably already ran off. Uh, you to go be with Angel. Uh, y'all batches. What did y'all are y'all drinking? Oh, uh, oh, there you go, Steve. Scotch. Right on. You Ooh. sipping? Which we're one? We're kind of talking about Scottish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scottish. We sure were. We're talking <laughs> about that. A double A. Well, should we get right into that news? That's pretty cool news. Yeah, sure. So they, they just announced that Henry Cavill is going to star in the new Highlander movie, hmm. the reboot. Henry Cavill? Yeah, the new Superman. Is he uh, our Superman? He's our living sure, Superman. Sure. Yeah. I think he is. He yeah. is. He's my Superman that's alive. Yeah. Christopher Reeve He's is. He's been in what? How many? Yeah, three, a lot. Four movies? Yeah. Right? I right. mean, Batman v Superman, Man of Steel, Man of Steel uh, Justice, League. Justice League, and so, then the Snyder Cut. So it's like, you know, you watch that like movie three, twice. Right? You know, but three, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's so. solid. That's a lot. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we love Highlander. Uh, we were actually talking in our group, The Friday Night Faithful. If you're not a member, please join. Um, but yeah, uh, Henry Cavill, man, Highlander, whether he's playing McCloud or as as I thought afterwards, he could even be the Kirk and the bad guy. Either way, it'd be very great. Um, who else we got here, Double A? Uh, Crystal just joined. What's up, Crystal? Hi, Crystal. Uh, cheers. Cheers. And Rich is in the house. What's up, Rich? What up, Rich? Cheers to you, buddy. I can tell you guys right now, you're always asking me, right? So I, I take my glasses off and then I can't read the far away small letters. It's in a small column on, on uh, Adam's side. So, I, so I'm always like, read the comments. <laughs> Either I'm having to put my glasses on and off when I'm moving in. And uh, when I'm looking at myself, it bothers me with the glasses on. So that's my own thing, whatever. But uh, yes, cheers, Rich, uh, to you as well. Let us know what you guys are drinking. Uh, guys, you know, even the if way it's water, just let us know. Yeah, even if it's water, it's what it could be soda, it could be. Remember, uh, we're all hanging out together. We're all this hanging is our out. time to hang out, totally, man. Shoot our time to spend with you and your time to join us in the conversation yeah. that we're going to talk about tonight, or also in this beginning part. Just wonder, catch us up on your I wonder week. if they can kind of guess what tonight's topic is going to be. Yeah, I'm sure some of you can guess. Uh, we're I don't not, know, maybe we're maybe. usually we're usually a little on the nose for some, some people, but uh, oh, Rich is ready. <laughs> great, he Rich, kind of great. knows, I, and I know you're going to bring the heat with the questions, man. He kind of knows. <laughs> Believe it or not, I, I hadn't. I I've been so behind on stuff, Double I haven't heard our own show in a while. I'm back in our NBA episode, oh, and I'm, I've still our got four an hour. Marathon. I've got an hour and 14 yeah. minutes left, and I'm listening to it on Spotify. I'm Trying to, I'm trying to keep up with the Now Watch This podcast with Joe and Lucky. Great <laughs> new episode they just put out about Renaissance, uh, Renaissance man. man. Do you guys remember Danny that DeVito old movie, movie, Danny DeVito? Yeah. Uh, Lilo Brancato. Yeah, Lilo Brancato. Brancato, yeah. Brancato, right? Yeah. Brancato, right? Yeah. yeah, and it's cool because Lucky actually references his interview with him where he did ask him about mm -hmm. that movie. Mm -hmm. And it's so mm -hmm. weird to listen to Joe and Lucky talk because, guys, me and Double A do this. We've known each other our entire lives. I've known him his whole life. <laughs> so, you know, it's 
it's hand in hand when we start talking. These are conversations we've been having yeah. for years. Yeah. Joe and Lucky didn't know each other. And I hear them talk, though, and they're getting better every episode. They're awesome. episode five, That's awesome. and 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 they have so much in common. And it's weird. They kind of they've given me credit on their show I was on that you know we kind of introduced them, and they're putting on a great pod, guys. Like it really, it does what I say. I hope that our show does, which is make you feel like you're in the room, sitting with us, hanging with us. And I do get that when I'm sitting there with Joe and Lucky. Uh, besides the episode that I actually did sit there with them and do it, but um, you know. Uh, this new episode definitely does that as well. The Renaissance Man episode, cool. really, really good. Cool. And if you haven't, I, I have seen that movie. It has been years since I've I seen saw it. it at school. Yeah, believe and that, it or not, <laughs> that's what Joe said. He said they would show it a lot yeah. at school. Yeah, and you know what? It really reminds me of one of our movies. We like uh, Dead Poet Society. It's got ah. that got that really strong message. And the, yes. the you know, this is a, 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 a yeah. tale as old as time, right? The the kids that are rough around the edges. In this mm -hmm. case, they're in the army, and then you got the teacher that comes in and kind of builds them up. Yep. And uh, in that one, it's a private school, right? I believe it's a private school, but mm -hmm. you know. Some got their issues, right? Know. Exact, and that's the exact same story, yeah. pretty much of Renaissance Man, and only that it's Danny DeVito instead of Robert Williams, and a different set of kids with a different set of situations. And again, it has Lilo Broncado from one of our favorites, Bronx, Bronx Tale, Tale. Marky. Up, uh, what was it, Marky Mark? Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> the great Mark Wahlberg. Sorry, Marky Mark. I, I see there, I did it again. It's you're, that's who you are to me because I'm that old. But you know, we'd love to have you on the show, uh, Mr. Wahlberg, if you ever want to be Damn. on. <laughs> Damn! If you're if you're browsing YouTube Damn. and you come across this and yeah. you, you'd be like you fucking asshole. So um, yeah, what else we got in the comments uh, here? Though? Anthony says Nanny likes buttery nipples. Uh, Rich says he needs another sports episode. That was an awesome night, Rich. I'm trying to get together a football episode. Yeah. So yeah, you guys have, to get that coming up. You guys yeah. have met uh, two of the three the three brothers or whatever, which growing up, these guys were like my three brothers, whatever. There's one missing that I've met that the new dad, Friday nighter, uh, Friday nighter will, uh, sometimes call him will the thrill. Uh, but, uh, he's still in full da on dad mode. So we want to give him a little bit of time to kind of maybe, uh, yeah, but that's what we're playing next is uh, yeah. football. Yeah. On America. Maybe, maybe in September yeah. when it kicks off, maybe, know, so. uh, maybe football, uh, international soccer. Yeah. Nope. Probably not. That's probably, probably not, not going to happen, guys. Uh, Richard says, good movie, and the students build up the teacher, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve says, guys, I was thinking maybe one day y'all could have a live show at Tandem so you can have a live audience just thinking. Man, I'm sure that Jesse, is a great idea. I'm sure Jesse Steve. can pull that off. Yeah, yeah, and Tandem is the perfect environment for that, right? Steve, you you liked it, right? We, I met Steve there to give oh, him a okay. shirt. Okay. And okay. we had uh, I, we had coffee. We, we all had coffee because it was early, Steve. I know we, had, we didn't have beer that time. But uh, what a great place, right? And I think Steve said he remembered it from yeah. the old days. And I'm My sure dad Jesse too. would like to host it, too. So oh, yeah. I mean, a, a podcaster himself. Yeah, Jesse. He just a, released a, another episode today. Yeah, he's doing some great local. Uh, well, I don't know if they're oh, necessarily and, local. And but. then he had uh, the mayor. At mm -hmm. his place. That's at right. Tandem. Yeah, had Ron Nuremberg. Mayor Ron there. Nuremberg, so, Mayor San Antonio was just recently. That's at pretty Tandem. fucking cool, man. That he was on Southtown. Yeah. So, and that is such a cool little place, guys. Here in San Antonio, Texas, if you get to go, they've done some performances there. There's a bridge, like a literal bridge, and when you're underneath it, it has these amazing acoustics. And uh, Jesse walked me down there and showed me. He's like, "We want to get more acts down here." And like, we were just talking, and our voice was like echoing. echoing. So <laughs> I can imagine what seeing music uh, like is there. They do trivia, guys. You guys love love pop culture, like we all do. You probably know more than we do. They've done The Office. They've done The Simpsons. They've done um, Harry Potter trivia. Uh, on different nights during the week. He said the office is super popular, right? Yeah. It was that at, one, right? At, at Luchador, at Luchador it was, but right? I wonder how it was at Tandem. Might have been the same. But you know what they just had this week? They did Broken Lizard. So they did Super Troopers nice. Beer Fest nice. and uh, Super Troopers 2 trivia. I mean, guys, how much freaking fun is that, man? I would go every night during the week if I could. If I could, too, I would. Too. I'll switch from coffee to beer quick, and then it'll be a, a, a <laughs> bad day the next day. So we don't want to do that. But if you guys are, like, off the next day or something – Tandem is always just super fun and cool to go chill out. It's a great outdoor area, and uh, it's just fun. It's right by the river, so it's, it's nice. It feels like those places are popping up more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the one right here where we used to have um, uh, Big Lou's Burgers. Right. That's turned into kind of one of those uh, places, Buckets. It's called Buckets. Yeah. yeah. Beer Garden. Yeah, so. I watched a, a McGregor fight there or whatever. Oh, it was okay. pretty cool. Okay. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of these places are popping up. And they're local, and these people, maybe there's your small businesses that are trying to get back out there, so we definitely want to go and support them. So. Rich says, yes, football. We can leave the Cowboys and the Patriots off that episode. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, Rich. So, yeah. great, Rich, where's the block button here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just Steve says, your... yes, sir. Yeah, and okay, then, right on. Uh, Rich says, I love trivia. I used to do the trivia at different bars here. 
in San Antonio. Rich, we might have been on a team together at one time because I, <laughs> I would do it over at uh, – damn, the place isn't even there anymore. But uh, we won a couple of times back when uh, Albert was uh, – well, I would go with Albert and, and Adam Friday night or the other. Yeah. Adam, they uh -huh. call it imitation. Adam, he would. That's he was still living here. We'd go do trivia, and sometimes we we would do pretty well. It would be like a mix, though. It wouldn't be one thing. Uh, Tandem does a really cool job of making it like it's really specific. Yeah, if, if you've heard our uh, Luchador episode, you know Jesse's like really, really into all that shit. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. he's a very funny guy, very sociable person. Very, very fun guy. Yeah. One of the best uh, owners of anything I've <laughs> yeah. ever met, too. So Super cool, dude. And we yeah. know some cool owners of stuff, so <laughs> yeah. Jess is definitely up there. Yeah. Um, and his, his, one of his co-owners of both of those places, Tandem and Luchador, Billy, would be excellent on tonight's episode. Uh, I wish he was here. Uh, Rich says, uh, yeah, it was a mix I used to go to on Monday or Wednesday. It was fun, he said. Yeah, man, definitely, definitely. Well, uh, hey, Rich, if you ever want to do it again, uh, hit us up, let us know, whatever. We'd like to have a ringer on the team so we can uh, get, get get some wins in there. I went to one of the Luchadors wrestling trivias, and I was like, I know shit. <laughs> I was like, I got my ass kicked. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you ask me anything like past 2005, I'm – I'm blank. I'm, yeah. I wouldn't know who had like WrestleMania 28. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm right there oh in the same boat with you. So uh, I don't know. That might, that might be uh, when might was be... John Cena's last match. Yeah. Right. I know. Right. <laughs> might be one of the reasons for our focus tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely there with that, guys. Uh, double what else? Any other thing in the news yeah, of uh, pop culture? The big movie came out today Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, starring Batista. Uh, starring Batista. If, uh, you know, uh, I forgot he did Dawn of the Dead. Kind of brought That's back right. the zombie movie kind of craze with with Dawn of the Dead. Uh, so I was like, because he had like a like a slow song in the beginning. I forgot what song it was, but it was kind of like a rockabilly kind of. And I was okay. like, this kind of sounds like Dawn of the Dead. You know how uh, disturbed they did Down with the Sickness, but yes. it sounded like a like a lounge. Long yeah, song. Like a lounge version. Yeah, you know, and I was like, let me look, <laughs> let me look, you know, see if he did. And yeah, sure enough, he did Dawn of the Dead. So, yeah, very uh, cool. The return Bill, of zombies. Bill came in, he goes, What is Tandem? Where is Tandem? And do they have craft beer? Uh, Tandem does have craft beer. Tandem is a coffee shop slash, um, coffee shop slash, I would, it, like brew house, I guess. No, they don't, they don't have a whole lot of beers. They have draft beer and they have craft beer and they have beer on tap and beer in bottles. And they also have coffee all the time, uh, Theo. And I know you're a big coffee guy as well. So your two favorite things combined. Where is it at? The South Side. Uh, put it in your Google thing, Tandem. Some people have told me it used to be an old strip club. Uh, in fact, my dad told me that. So uh, I don't doubt him when it comes to those things. So maybe yeah. that will help. But it's right by the river, uh, Theo, not far from Ro Roosevelt. So uh, yeah, I would love to go there with you. Uh, Theo, have a, either a beer or a coffee there and check it out. And again, if uh, Jesse's around to get a chance to meet him, he's a great uh, owner and they're going to do some music there. And again, I highly suggested uh, to uh, Rob Kubis to go and get in touch with them to do a live set there for his new album. Again, King's Indian, because I really I really love it. And I cannot wait to hear that live. And I will be there for sure. The first place he plays. Um uh, Sue says he saw Army of the Day. It's not too bad. Okay, all right. Already, uh, already, Steven just came out. You got on it quick. Awesome. And then Rich says, how do you feel about Batista as an actor? I don't, I don't think too much of him. Um, I think he's fine. Um, you he's know, it good, just depends just the on way the way he is. Yeah. I thought I actually thought he did really great as Drax. They like that's not a character that's funny. Character, though, yeah, yeah, you know? more of a side character. You know what I mean? But we liked him in uh in um, Quantum. Was it Quantum? He's in. Uh, he's so, in. No, it's um. The last, uh, the Bond, last Bond one or whatever. But either way, Spectre. Spectre. No speaking, really. You know what I mean? But good, look good in the suit, big buff guy, and, you know, can do those type of action-y things. So that's that's cool. Um, I haven't seen any of his, like, where he is, I guess, the lead. Like, with, there's one with him and the kid, right, or something like that. I haven't seen any of those. So <laughs> you I, I don't, you know, to me, he's not like, I'm not going to be like, oh, go no, see it because it's I'm Batista not. or whatever. Yeah. But uh <laughs> What about him in Highlander? Him versus Cavill? Uh, I know they had mentioned him a lot of times as the Kurgan. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It'd be a different. You know what? He was really good in the new uh, Blade Runner. But he only had, he again a brief role. <laughs> yeah. But but it was like serious, and I thought he did really well. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think he could have took Gosling's ass, but you know. All right, greatest Drax. <laughs> uh, what are you? What do you guys ranking Batista as an actor? Let us know. Uh, Bill says, "Man of Wrath." Anyone seen it yet? I have not seen it. Is it on? Where can we stream? You know, let me let us know. 
Uh, and then, uh, Steve, again, uh, another plug for Tandem. Great place to show Tandem. Hey, uh, we're going to get some free drinks here. Some of that, all these plugs right here. Yeah, he, he hooked <laughs> us up that night. So. He did. Yeah, plenty of times he has. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and Billy made us some great drinks that night. And yeah, they were drinking straight whiskey. So. <laughs> that was at Luchador, but yeah, the same Luchador. owners. But yeah, but I bought it. I have a Tandem t shirt. I bought two shirts from them. Yeah. And then they bought Jesse. I still bought have the mask that I, I don't think I can still show. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely good stuff on that. So, um, so guys, my, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it real quick. Uh, but I show my pickups for the week or whatever before we get into our first break. Um, again, you guys know, like we do it every thirty minutes here. We take a quick little, uh, little blip, as I call it, or whatever. But if we're here with us live, we don't go anywhere. It's just for the audio to load in on the audio side. But uh, kind of the big thing, if you saw our 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 Twit Talk or our uh, our Twit Talk. Our TikTok, our, TikTok, our Twi Twitter. Twi uh -huh. That's going to be the new one, TikTok. We're going to create that. T Twitter and TikTok buy oh, each other fuck. out. But anyway, uh, if you saw any of our social media, you guys saw that last Saturday I was at Movies, and I didn't bring my little Movies lunchbox with me. But, um, yeah, Austin did – Austin, the city of Austin, did a pop-up. Uh, Kevin Smith, you know, taking around the Movies restaurant from his, you know, Jay and Silent Bob movies. Um, I think it comes out in Dogma, comes out in uh, – Obviously, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, um, and probably a couple of other ones after that. Oh, Clerks too. Um, oh, yeah, so they're definitely. working at movies. Yeah. Uh, so I'm eating it. So it was neat. They basically pretty much the way that the Halloween store dresses up a, a non-existent store anymore, like a, for a Halloween store. That's what Kevin Smith did with movies and dressed up this uh, space in Austin. And uh, I mean, my lady went there and checked it out, and we had some burgers and tots. And uh, the tots are called hater tots. Oh. The, the onion rings are called uh, One Rings to Rule Them All. Damn, uh, of man. course, you got the cow tippers, the nice. burger. Uh, we had some lemonades, and I actually bought – you know what? I'll bring that next week for us to drink. It's called – it's the Secret Stash. That's Kevin Smith's comic store, IPA. I know we don't like IPAs. Whoa. Maybe we'll just Holy let one. Shit, really? Yeah. yeah. It's an IPA. Yeah. Well, a bear, wow. apparently a brewery made it specifically for them wow. for them doing this okay. pop-up. So I think it might be an Austin brewery. Damn. We'll find out next nice. week. I'll bring, I'll bring a can of it. I don't know why I didn't do that this week. I was just running out nice. the door. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. I didn't even try it yet, so I have the whole six pack there. So uh, we'll try that for you guys next week. Um, but uh, yeah, it was really fun, really cool. They've got it, you know, like I said, dressed up like, you know, kind of like a movies restaurant. But, you know, the food wasn't all that. Nothing to write home about. It was very expensive. You're paying for an experience. It, it's um, pretty experience. Like I told CM, I was like, yeah, they, it's probably just your average burger that they put on the grill. And, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just cool. The scenery is cool. Like if you're a big fan of like movies like that, like me and CM are, that's just really cool. You know, uh, like the Comic Cons, I like when they, they put in the cantina. The yes, Star Wars Quarantine. I, I mean, know. that's just fucking cool. You Super know? awesome. Yeah. Super so. awesome. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was amidst all the stuff with I my wish friend. I could have gone. Yeah. yeah. I wish Double A would have been there with me, man. I had something else I needed to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, again, it was like amidst like a, all the stuff with my, my dad. You guys know the night before, which, by the way, thank you guys for all your prayers and all the well wishes. He is doing fine now and, and, and uh, recovering with us at home. So that's really great. So um, thank you guys again so very much for that. It meant the world to me, and he's doing good. And I let him know that the Friday Night Faithful and the Friday Nighters are looking out for him. So. But as far as pickups, the one thing I wanted yeah, to talk about really here this story. is we haven't been really going too much, but this is the same issue, but it's it, I got two different covers. So it is the Fortnite. Uh, let me show you one and one. The Fortnite uh, Batman Batman X Fortnite Zero Point. That's like the whole title. This is the number three issue that just came out, right? There's actually a third cover that I don't know what it looks like right now, but if anybody has one, I have another one of these, and I'd be willing to trade it. So oh, sure. watch let me know. But if you guys can tell right there, who do we got there, Double A? It's Batman and Snake Eyes. Okay, so the story, the first uses were a little slow, but this really picked it up, and I'll tell you guys why. So what happens that's really cool is that – so. They make it kind of like you're in the game and in the Fortnite world, you're dropped into this game and, and and every 22 minutes it resets and you come back without your memories and you don't have the ability to speak. But of course, Batman being who Batman is, he's been dropping himself clues throughout the game. That's the story of the comic. He so he's trying to remember the Catwoman is there too. He encounters her. He, he and you can hear it. You can read his inner monologue where he's like, I don't remember her but there's something familiar about kind of her. like a memento almost, yes right? almost like a memento yeah and so there's almost like this uh and and you can kind of get in this issue you get like a lot of the 
whoever the overseers are ah, of, of the game okay. of Fortnite. We don't know who they are yet, but they're talking to each other and they're saying, we do know that sometimes emotions are residual. Well, because Batman is getting like so close to like maybe figuring things out and they don't like that, they have to bring in a new contestant to match him because they're like, he's beating everybody like with ease. He's, he's Batman is. and he's leaving he these is. clues. He's figuring it out. He's getting close. So who do they drop in? They drop in freaking Snake Eyes Damn. in very grand fashion. Damn. And then I don't know if this has ever been done, Double A, Batman versus Snake Eyes. I, we've talked about it. Remember, we have talked about right. this. And I said Snake Eyes should be able to kick his ass. I I agree or at least be evenly matched. I know Batman fans will say no. But, guys, they start to go at it, and it is written that way. It is a very even match, right? But, again, after the time ends, it's like it restarts, and they're dropped in again. And it shows them encountering each other several times. Well, as they're encountering each other each time, it's almost like game recognized game, right? Like they're like, man, it's almost like where they are looking forward to facing one another. And then there's like this mutual respect building. And then like the, the overseers are even questioning. It's kind of like their memos going back and forth to each other. And they're like, is respect a feeling? We've never had <laughs> this hangover like into a new thing. So it's like, you know, it's getting to the point where like okay. they're just evenly matched. About, and then at the point where they're, kind of communicating almost like through hand ah, gestures and they shit. definitely don't like that holy so shit. um it, it it was very reminiscent to me of like the batman animated series like ninja episodes yes. and yes. i was like i was like i, I had my nephew read it to me because he's reading it with me and uh i was like man that is so freaking cool like he hung in there a did not get his ass beat like people might be like batman over snake eyes no it should not be that way they were very evenly matched and then the fact that as they continued to face each other multiple times they just uh like it was like this again like it was like this mutual respect had formed and it made it very cool and there's a couple of great panels in the yeah. enemy where they're like okay. one's gonna fall and the other one like grabs him okay. and it's like this I was like, man. So then they eventually they zap Snake Eyes out of there because they're like, no, like these guys are too good together. Did they show his tattoo anytime? I don't think so. But uh, he's in the in the in the, the awesome yeah. badass yeah. uniform, whatever. Yeah. And it's in in this one, it's on his sword. That yeah, yeah, on it's his, always on his sword. Yeah, the sword's yeah. on his sword. Yeah. So it yeah. was very very cool. But I was like, man, this issue definitely picked okay. it up. Right. Uh, and then you get a, an interesting last page panel, which I won't spoil for you guys. But uh, yeah, guys, definitely if you want to check it out. Uh, again, I'm a fan of the game Fortnite. I play it with my nephew, and it, that makes it a lot more fun. A lot of people are big fans of Fortnite. Mm, it is because this book is selling out. So, yeah. uh, but yeah, Batman X Fortnite uh, Zero Point is what it's called. And especially cool. if you like Snake Eyes, like I know very you're a big cool. Snake Eyes yes, fan. The number three is a lot of fun. Yes, and if I don't know if Batman and, and Snake Eyes have done in comics I've before, I've seen it. But if this is the first time, it is very that's awesome. Well done. That's, but awesome. that's how it should be. They should be an even match. I think that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, what else we got? Double A. Uh, Bill says IPA. Uh, Steve wants to go one more time. Tandem. Yeah. Joe's in the house. What, what up, up Joe? Boys? What up, Mister? Now watch this. Now, Joe, did you like my my poll in your group? Then now watch this for the watchers. Did we decide on a name? Was it was it Smoking Joe? Was it? Uh, Joe. Damn, I think Joe. I think we need to narrow it down Damn. already, Joe. To get it, we got we got to narrow it down to maybe five or ten, and and uh, start taking some out there, so uh, we can get it down to a manageable number. Then we get a big vote going. We get maybe we get Jerry Jerry D to help us. Jerry's great with those polls he does. So uh, Rich says, "Glad your dad is doing better. God is good. Prayers Absolutely. for his All speedy the time. recovery." He Thank says. you so much, Rich. And Joe says, "Bats always prepare." First dude in Fortnite with prep time. So, <laughs> totally, yeah. man. Totally. I uh, love it, man. I'm glad that you guys are all here. Uh, we're getting close up on the first break, but we're not Joe, quite there yet. Joe, I hope you can stay on this one. Yeah. Uh, it should be uh, up your alley on this one. He did He did tell me why we didn't call him in, but we have some really special plans with Now Watch This. Yeah, we uh, do. In yeah, addition to just Joe yeah. himself. That's something I've talked about double A with him and that and, and, and Albert. And maybe another buddy of ours, uh, a, a buddy of ours, Sean or whatever. Uh, I know there's always a, a big debate amongst wrestling fans, especially now. That would be a good one too, actually. You know, which is fun to me. It's great that there's even wrestling uh, to be debated about. You know what I mean? We haven't really had that maybe since the WCW days. No, so no. Uh, Joe says my friend from work said Sloppy Joe. Sloppy Everyone Joe. liked that one, but not me. <laughs> I know. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't paint a very nice picture of you. Joe. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bill uh, says had some beans the other night and played fart night. Man, fart night, uh, it's not too bad. You know, not bad. <laughs> I've heard some of the grown ups on TikTok call it fork fork knife. Fork knife. Okay. Fork, fork knife. knife. Yeah. All right. If you're hungry, you know, right. there, there's that. 
So that was all the quick pickups that uh, I had. I didn't have anything yeah. uh, too uh, insane, like I said, between movies and then that. Uh, I went to the comic store yesterday, saw some cool stuff, two comic stores, and I uh, I just picked up the books because I was like, you know what I mean? If you go down that rabbit hole, you go down the rabbit hole quick in the comic Yeah, store. you do. Oh, so. plus, guys, we will talk about this before we go to break. Tomorrow, a very good likelihood, you will see this dynamic duo yeah. over at... It's not very likely. It is. You You will see me. At <laughs> Ekman's... Toy, comic, comic, and uh, it's everything. Card, comic, toys, toys comic, cards. It has a name. It has a name. Yeah, it's it's cards, comics, toys. Cards, comics, and toys. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's like this was our thing for thirty years. I think he said now, or yeah. twenty nine or thirty years. Yeah. Uh, it used to be at the Live Oak Civic Center. Mm -hmm. It did move up to New Braunfels. It's been on Austin Highway. Uh, this time, it's going to be at the Shrine Auditorium. It's a really cool place. That's a really good venue for that place. Uh, we've seen wrestling there too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We see we see, see Ring of Honor. So they're going to have you know if you're into cards, if you're into comics, if you're into toys, uh, that will be the place to go to. Just about every vendor should be there. Yeah, uh, yeah. all over San Antonio. So and a little a little bird told us that although he won't be set up with a booth, you will have a good opportunity to run into Mr. Mario Delgado out there, at least maybe just walking around, shaking hands and, yeah. and telling us how yeah. life is after the shop. So uh guys, get out there, go check it out. It's little, from uh nine nine, nine in the four. morning to four yeah. uh, in the afternoon. Ten dollar cover, ten dollar cover, but free yeah. parking. Uh but if you have kids ten and under, it's free. Okay, cool. And and free parking, and it's the Al Zafar Shrine Auditorium, Shrine 281 Auditorium. and 1604. Yeah. Great yeah. venue. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And there's a very good likelihood that we'll both be there actually together. So yeah. uh, flipping books will be have our noses in a Yeah, so uh, if you want to talk to me, and you better wait until after the show. <laughs> <laughs> buy him a beer maybe. Uh, not in the morning, but maybe buy him a beer yeah. and get him talking. But, guys, we're right up at the 30-minute mark. You know what we do every 30 minutes. We take yeah. a quick little break yep. just for our audio to load, and that time we'll go ahead and read it's some more. It's going to be a fun comments. one. So. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Guys, so stick around, join the conversation, uh, hang out, talk with us, and, uh, yeah, we'll get it going. So let's go ahead and we'll end our audio portion right now, guys. So we will be right back in just a blip. And, guys, again, you know I always say this every time. If you're listening to us, watching us on Facebook Live, we don't go anywhere. We do this for the audio portion. So uh, any other comments in there that we can read real quick? Let's see. Uh Aaron B says, what's up, my brothers? What's up, Aaron B? Uh, Let is in the house. She says, hello, handsome cousins. Hello, beautiful cousin. Hey, what's up, Aaron? What's up, Let? Joe Love says, you, Let. Uh, that live looked badass there. Uh, yeah, Joe. Joe, come on. Oh, you got, oh, you got, you said, I think you said you got work tomorrow, man. So maybe you uh, call in sick. I don't know. It's a one day only, Joe. It's not like a regular con. It's mainly like a, like a, I guess like straight, they call it a show. Yeah, it's just so, a straight comic yeah, show. Yeah, straight show. It's, people do cosplay there and this, stuff. Yeah, well, no, they said no cosplayers. Oh, no, really? Yeah, I actually oh, didn't wow. read that. I was kind of surprised when I read that. But so. can you dress up? Like, could I dress up? I don't know. It oh, said okay. no cosplayers. So. Well, I wonder if that's a. I don't know. Thing. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, most of us are fully vaxxed and we're fully vaxxed now, so we're good. Um, but either way, interesting. Uh, Tony B is back. What up, Tony B? Um, Bill says, uh, what's up, what? <laughs> uh, Rich says, uh, what do y'all think about the writer from Thundercats movie saying the movie is going to blow fans' minds? Um, of course he's going to say that. Yeah. You know, um, I hope so. I hope so, too. I just, I'm still kind of iffy on the, that they're still kind of making it animated. Oh, really? You know, mm, yeah. I, I was know. like, oh, Lee, because Masters is going to get one, and Transformers has one, and, you know. Uh, what's like, that budget like? You know, give it give it the give it the live action treatment. Give it the full budget there. You know? If you're going to do it animated-ish, make it a show. It's just, I don't think that's going to get people mm -hmm. uh, coming back. No, it, I don't think know? so either. Yeah, you got to go live action, man. Go all the way. We, uh, we talked about the Motu pictures last week, yeah, whatever, yeah, but uh, yeah. that, was, that was pretty sweet. Um, uh, Rich said he got his second shot today. Awesome, Rich. Right on, Rich. Good uh, job, man. Joe says we got to plan a wrestling event, boys. Live wrestling coming back. Uh, there is one coming in June 27th. Joe, you're into RCW. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be here June 27th. That's going to be a Sunday night, yeah. though. But uh, it looks like a good show. And AEW on a Wednesday night is going to be up oh, in, in Austin. Austin. Yeah, uh, we know Joe will be there first then, in line. Like our guy Ivory says right now, WWE is coming back too in Texas in July. They're going to be at Houston. Yeah. So right on, Ivory. What do you think about W? Uh, uh, AEW. Are you a fan? Do you ever watch other promotions besides WWE? Just curious. You know what I mean? If people go into get into some of the other ones, Impact. Man, Joe, if Ring of Honor comes, we gotta go. Uh, that's my fucking thing. I 
I've been to almost every Ring of Honor show there. I don't think I've, I, I've never been to a bad Ring of Honor show. I've never been without knowing any story, any context, any characters. Yeah. They're so yeah. fucking athletic. They're so good at what they do. My girlfriend doesn't even like wrestling that much. She will sit there and be captivated by the guys. When she first saw Flip Gordon, she was like, A, that guy is oh, hot. Flip. And B, she was yeah. like, that guy is amazing because he was fucking rad. I mean, that's when I fell in love with Flip Gordon at a San Antonio show here, and he was awesome. Uh, and it's the same thing. If you like RCW and you love RCW and you RCW love Brandon Oliver, too. it's yeah. the same. It's almost the yeah. same thing. Of these guys, RCW they're is a little good. bit bigger. I mean, like Brandon is a true local promotion, which no, but, is awesome. But Brandon but has had people from Impact Wrestling. He's had people yeah. from AEW. Cody has been there. Yeah, he's managed to snag Cody. He's Mankind, managed, Molina. He's yeah. had uh, uh, Ricky Steamboat. I met Ricky Steamboat there. I yeah. met Road Warrior Animal there. And not even that, guys. But how many people that have wrestled at RCW? When when I yeah. when I had a yeah. brief uh, tenure with RCW, just trying to go to their wrestling school, uh, badly going. But uh, Ray Rowe was the champ. You know Ray what I mean? Rowe. Ray Rowe is yeah. now in WWE. Uh, Sammy guys. Guevara. Sammy Guevara. Too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so I mean, guys, he's got the you know that's he's got I mean. people. All he, wrestling, he, is, yeah. good. All wrestling yeah. is good. All wrestling is good. Uh, what do we got um, comment wise? What he do we goes. Joe says RCW, RCW. Ivory says <laughs> AEW, AEW. Oh, there we go. Uh, Joe says hell yeah, Ring of Honor. Ivory said he went to the AEW Double or Nothing in Vegas. No a few shit, years ago. that well, must have been go. badass. There you go. Yeah, right on. Uh, Ivory. Well, yeah, well they are coming to Austin, man. So uh, again, it's a Wednesday night, which kind of sucks. But that man, I suck. bet that'll yeah. be a great show. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you can't put every every show on a on a on a weekend. You know, if it was a Wednesday here in town, that'd be different. But it would be different. Austin, it would back, be different. Yeah. You know, I got to work. So, but I heard the venue is good, and I heard that Shit, it. Tim, we did that drive. It was on a Saturday, yeah. but we did that drive, yeah. and it was super fucking late. <laughs> yeah, and we saw Sammy Guevara there too, and yeah. Ricochet, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's not fun. Uh, so much fun during the week, going come back. But that's where um, we met the gorillas. That's right. We met yeah. the Grills of Destiny. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people shit. We Matanza. met uh, uh or Matanza. Cobb. Jeff yeah. Cobb, Jeff, I Jeff Cobb. Say. Yeah. I met yeah. um uh who's our boy? We uh, met um well you didn't get to meet him. Was I was I went out uh, Zach, Zach, yeah, Zach Saber? Yeah, uh, Zach Saber. Very cool. Sexy star before sexy she was star kind of was there, yeah. <laughs> How about Scott Norton Scott from Norton. NWO? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh yeah. Phoenix, you know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of good people uh, there. Kate. Brian That's Cage. right, Brian Cage, the yeah. Jack Super and Jack. Man, Cage. you know, most of the time they look smaller when you actually see them. This guy did not look smaller at all. He the fucking cage is really that big. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, man. I, the size of your his arms, yeah, the size of my freaking head. We're kind of surprised, right? When we go meet wrestlers and we're like, whoa, you're not that big. Yeah, certain <laughs> you know? guys. Yeah, like me and Zach Saber are almost the same size. Of course, like, that guy like I was like two times bigger than Adam Cole. Uh -huh. I was like, golly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, definitely good stuff. Yeah, so Ivory does confirm it. Both well, Dynamite is on Wednesday, so that makes sense that it would be on a Wednesday live. And then Joe says, corn on a Saturday in Austin, June 18th. I want to go see. Stain. Uh, if you do go, Joe, you might see Albert. <laughs> uh, Albert already has his tickets. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big corn fan, but I want to see Stain. Uh, uh, me and my girlfriend bought tickets for In This Moment yeah. already here at Aztec. Uh, and I need to get I my, love them. I need to get my tickets. Uh, tickets went on sale for Alice Cooper. He's going to be in Austin. Mm -hmm. I've never, never seen, seen him. him. And Ace is going to open up for. Him. Oh, that'll be yeah, nice. So that's fucking cool. You know, Alice I like Cooper. I like Ace's catalog. Yeah, you know. So yeah. I'll check it out. Does he play? He can't play Kiss songs, right? Yeah, he can. He can. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's very badass. Yeah. Okay. Very well, you know cool. how he, he does like New York Groove and right, you know, right. because he has his own songs. Yeah, that he have, does. That yeah. fall under that. So yeah, very badass. Okay, guys. So let's... man, it's uh the summer's coming up, man, and everything's opening up, and it's looking uh looking good again. And people are are seemingly healthy, and we've masked more long and more enough. More people are getting and, the vaccination. And, yeah, and so. people are vaxxed, and so that's cool. But don't let your guard down. Don't let your guard down. I mean, you know, uh, just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you're not gonna <laughs> right. You're not gonna get it because uh, Yankees. You heard that outbreak, right? In the no, New York Yankees. I didn't hear so that. So they're all vaccinated, but they still got COVID. Oh wow! So there was a little COVID outbreak. Okay, in so the Yankee, it still uh, can be. Yeah. Okay, see, that's a yeah. good. That's a good example right there. So yeah, I mean, like I said, the way I feel is that they've told us you can unmask and you can stop social distancing because you're fully vaccinated. But the way I feel is that like the people that didn't want to get vaccinated are the ones that wanted to unmask. Yeah. So how do I know that you're not just unmasking? Yeah. And I can't yeah. ask you that. So it's like, all right, right. that's why I'm like. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Still keep your guard up. Always be. Uh, what do they yeah. say? Protect yourself at all times, right? Don't yes. Worry. 
Yes. So uh, same thing here, guys. Boxing rules. Keep the boxing rules going. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. So Joel says Deftones. I think in September. Uh, here, Gojira as well. If they come here, I'm I'm definitely seeing Deftones. Uh, so I'm that's another band I've never seen live. So. I'll go I'll go to hang with y'all. I mean, my girlfriend probably like it. She probably like Deftones, and I, I like them. They're good. I mean, I, I saw them live at I think it was Warp Tour actually or whatever. Yeah, so nice. that's how long ago that nice. was. Uh, so I probably need another another viewing. Is probably I'm I'm overdue. I'll check it out. Check it out in honor of Gojira's you guys. Gojira's though is a weird pairing. They're super heavy though. Super heavy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Geek hey, Odyssey, right. thanks for checking us out. Hey, Geek Odyssey, thank you for awesome. checking us out, sure man. We're both doing both things. We, we do things a little bit different here, guys, but we appreciate you. Uh, love your uh, show and that we found you guys. And, and again, uh, guys, uh, Geek Odyssey is another uh, show on YouTube. Uh, they go live every Friday night as well. We were uh, watching them before we went live. We were watching them before we went live. We were getting ready for our live, watching their live. We put some comments on theirs. Uh, a, a duo, a husband and a wife team. They're very cool, uh, very nice. And um, uh, they do different stuff. They were talking Pokemon tonight. We will probably the never. Cards. Yeah, the cards. Yeah. That's some, that's a topic that we'll probably never cover here. You know what I mean? So that's why I say there's other options. And again, too, you know, our show can be a little bit adult. So, uh, you know, a little bit rated R sometimes, so not for the uh, for the the young folks. So definitely have them check out Geek SA for sure. Uh, it's a it's a very uh, nice, well done, well produced show. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, it meets is. our production value yes, for sure. Yeah. So uh, go check it out. Uh, absolutely, man. We want to support all local uh, pop culture uh, addicts around here. You know, just like I said too, with the now watch this pod with Joe and Lucky, they did Renaissance Man. That's something that me and Double A are never going to cover. You know, they did Mortal Kombat. We're never going to cover that. <laughs> not never, but we didn't. We're not going to cover that movie you know what i mean and we we have great outlets for you to go and go get that info from so go check it out there for sure um uh oh geek odyssey has yeah. got to have you on the show sometime yeah. well we would love to do that absolutely and we got to have you on the show sometime too uh we would love that as well uh we got to figure out how we're going to do that since we're both live on friday <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, but yeah, absolutely. We'd love to talk to you guys more about that. So uh, thank you so much. You got us. Yeah, thank that. you guys. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, we thank appreciate you. it. And, and you guys said our name on your show, which is very cool. You guys yeah, have a, thank you. Uh, a super big audience on YouTube. We're on YouTube also, but it comes out not live. It comes out after the fact of this live. So uh, check it out there. Well, guys. Thank you. So thank yeah, you for yeah, checking us out. Appreciate you guys. That, that means a lot to us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for accepting um, our invite. All right, guys. Well, let's get uh, right into the topic of the night. Uh, that's all the comments there. So Joe says, rated R as in the rated R superstar. That's right, Joe. It ain't easy being sleazy. So, Great uh, you know, there we go here. So, all right, let's bring it back okay. in. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. You know how we do it here. We're live on Facebook every Friday night. Uh, you just heard us uh, come out of one of our breaks that we do uh, every 30 minutes so that the audio here can load up for all of our audio listeners out in podcast land, anywhere podcasts are available, iTunes, Audible, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Pandora, the list goes Breakers, on and on. Stitcher, mm -hmm. you know, Pandora. Yeah, Podcast totally. Addicts. Totally, guys. Uh, so find us there if you don't want to hear what happens in the breaks, which is it's usually a much tighter. Yeah, it's a much tighter show. So. Bit, yeah, sometimes we're up at three hours. That one comes in at about two. Yeah. So uh, definitely check it out there. Uh, but guys, without further ado, we're going to go right into the topic of the night. So uh, if our T-shirts didn't give it away, it might be a little bit, you know, you might just not know what they mean. So, you know, somebody might think that double is wearing the Ronda Rousey one or whatever. Oh, you know what I, mean? I forgot so, about that. Someone might think that I'm wearing, uh, you know, the city of Austin and, 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 you know, my favorite Bible verse or whatever. I you know what about I mean? that so, shit. But that is not the case. We are talking one of our favorite topics we haven't talked about in a while. And yeah, it is wrestling, yeah. but specifically we are talking about mania madness and attitude guys and what does that mean double a break it down from okay so guys so two most productive most popular eras we want to break down which uh, we think is more popular the 80s rock and wrestling that you know hokamania exploded from from 84 to 91 or is it the attitude era led by stone cold steve austin uh from 97 to 03 uh we want to break down who was the better wrestlers, the better good guys, the better bad guys, uh, the storylines, which ones were better, mm -hmm. what storylines were better, what tag teams were better, uh, what was the peak, peak, peak review for each performance. So uh, this first uh, break, I mean, this first uh, one we're doing, we're going to be breaking down the rock and wrestling. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about that, Double A. First off, I, I've heard you call it that several times. 
But me hearing you say it, the first couple times I've heard you say it, is the first time I heard that. But this is what WWE has branded it. It always has. Either it's caught that or Hulkamania. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, it's, it's you know, the MTV, it's when it really crossed over, mm -hmm. when wrestling was stopping this niche, this territory system, and it started becoming nationwide, more known. Mm -hmm. You know, Hulk Hogan was covering MTV. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, something that had never been done before. Right. You know, it, it started getting out more and more. He started recognizing Macho Man. He started recognizing Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate Warrior, mm -hmm. Ted DiBiase. You know, he started right. He actually started knowing these wrestlers like he would know athletes. You know, yeah. so it was a very productive time that really just made Vince McMahon Jr. a power player in the wrestling industry, and he kind of just took over the wrestling world during this period of time. He pretty much put everyone else out of business, grabbed all their main stars, and put them on his show and said, here you go. Now give me the years, Double that specifically people kind of consider this rock Okay, so era. this is what I consider it. I consider it from 84 when Hulk Hogan won the title to about 91, about WrestleMania 7 time. Uh, that's when I kind of, you know, because about that time, you know, Hogan wasn't too active anymore. Macho Man wasn't too active. Warrior was in and out. And it kind of started going downhill, not just for WWF, but mm -hmm. for all of wrestling. Mm -hmm. 91 to 92, that's your... There was your, a little lull. Your lean period. Yeah. 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 Uh, but was, man, it lean, was it lean all over wrestling? Or it just, was all over okay. wrestling. It wasn't okay. just... I mean, New Japan, All Japan, WCW, none of them were hitting their stride. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, but, man, we, we're not talking about that. We are talking about the boom that is the rock and wrestling mm -hmm. and the man who started it off, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Man, now, oh, man. So, so Mania 1 is what year? That is 85. 85. Okay, so you're talking about this is, it's coming up to this. It, it's still a territory system when, when Vince brings back Hulk Hogan. It's still mm -hmm. a territory system. But you know what? Vince is like, fuck this. I don't want to be a territory anymore. I want us to branch out. I want us to grab the world. I want everyone to know who we are. Which you know? some people hate. Some people and don't like you know that what? this happened. His fucking general, his right hand man, whatever you want to call it, was Hulk Hogan. Excuse and me. man, there was no one yeah. more popular than this man, this six foot eight, three hundred pound giant. And the I mean, blonde hair, the man. blonde hair, the charisma, the oh, tan. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the nah, twenty four inch python ripping brother. off the shirt, you know. And, uh, um, if, yeah. if we talked Star Wars a little bit last week in George Lucas, but if Vince McMahon was the Emperor, Hulk Hogan was definitely oh, the Darth, that was Vader, his Darth Vader. No doubt. Yeah. And who better? You know what I mean? Um, guys, for me, Terry Bollea, there is obviously in He's recent a times controversial controversy. now. We understand. At this time, At this uh, time in the 80s, this man. Guys, there was no WWE back then. It was just the WWF. Yeah. Okay. That's what we grew up as, yes. dude, as. And in the 80s, for me, when I think about the things that were the defining qualities of my youth, you know, besides the Super Friends, besides the, you know, uh, Marvel Marvel VHS movies that I was watching um, and, and the comic books that I was reading and He-Man, yeah, you know, and the 80s cartoons, yeah, the, the Saturday morning the cartoon. Other, the, the, the real life superheroes, what a superhero, what a Superman would look like. To me, was Hulk Hogan. Was this giant. If yeah. Superman was a real guy and he had a body, to me, it would have just looked like how Hulk Hogan looks in my mind as a kid. And in the 80s, as a kid, this was everything. I loved Junkyard Dog. Me and my dad would slap our belly like Kamala. You know what I mean? I talked about that. He was the Ugandan giant. He yep. was scary. The, yep. ma the macho man. You know yep. what I mean? I was like, you know, it, it was so cool. The elbow. I mean, yep. and, and, and my other guy at that time, and my my two guys were was Hulk Hogan and, and the Ultimate Warrior. I loved those two guys, and I loved Macho too. But I remember I was thinking of Macho as a bad guy. Yeah, I remember thinking of this guy hating Roddy Roddy mm -hmm. Piper as mm -hmm. a bad guy, hating Jake the Snake, hating Mr. Yep. Perfect, hating Ravishing Recruit, yep. hating the Million Dollar. I really hated him as a kid. I hated those guys. Yes, I hated Earthquake when he crushed. And that's Hogan. what you're supposed to do. Exactly. Uh, you know what? There is something about remembering how you watched wrestling as yes. a kid that is just so it just makes much you fun feel better yeah and you know the the first villain i kind of want to talk about because he's the one that kind of helped start it off is hot rock mm -hmm. uh okay you can have hulk Hogan, you can have this great hero but you really need that great villain that yep. great we always villain. say that on this show okay and there is no one you can get that was hotter than you can get than hot rod mm -hmm. this guy just would spew shit out you know just irritate people piss yeah. people off to 
you know, no bounds, you know, people wanting to stab him. You know, I, I saw his <laughs> I saw his A and E biography. Mm -hmm. He started wearing a leather jack a leather jacket to protect wow. himself. Okay. Because he got stabbed like three times at certain at different times, you know, and it's funny because that's one of the things I think about him. I'm like, that's a bad guy, like that the, is. Leather, the black leather jacket, and then the kilt. You know, people didn't know what a kilt <laughs> yeah. was. It's like you're wearing a dress, and back then that's kind of frowned on, right? So it's like, here's this guy wearing a dress, talking wearing shit, a kilt, wearing you know, a dress, moving his know? hair, moving his hair yeah. around when he's talking, and he's just like getting a hype. And I'm like, man, I hate this dude. I hate this dude, yeah, man. So many did, you know. So from '84, this guy, you know, while Hogan was dominating, this guy was pissing off people like Superfly Jimmy Snuka, mm -hmm. you know, making fun of his his accent, making fun of where he was from. He brought out pineapple, saying that this was the Samoan woman, you know, fluffy hair <laughs> with a round brown body, wow. you know, and <laughs> smashing a coconut on his head, Very, and, a Piper's pit, yeah, and pissing off Andre the Giant. I, I remember you know? when I would see those setups double a i would see like they like it was always the bad guys that had talking <laughs> segments right and i was like oh no no i didn't want the good guys to go on because i was like so the bad's gonna happen there was never there was never there was a moment. never a good segment brother love had one it, got, it was always bad it got so bad with high rod because he would always piss people off that he started getting bob orton jr as his bodyguard <laughs> wow. Fucker needed a bodyguard. Yeah, Randy's dead. Yeah, he started needing a bodyguard, and then he teamed up with Mister <laughs> Wonderful, Paul Ornor. You mm -hmm. know, another fucking asshole. You know, Mister Wonderful. I mean, what kind that, of fucking smug name is that? And it sucks. You know? dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's like yeah. Wonder Man from Marvel. I'm like, that's your name. So you know, when when they're crossing, when WWF is just, it's already booming. It's bursting. They get Cindy Lauper. You know, and. They're presenting with Captain Lou Albano, uh, mm -hmm. platinum album of, you know, I guess her latest album, Hot Rock comes out. And, mm -hmm. you know, the New York crowd is booing. Oh, yeah. And what does he do? He like, grabs that disc, he bashes it over <laughs> Albano's head. And, you know, Sidney Lopper is there. Now, was Albano a worker? Did, was yeah. that? that was, okay, so yeah. he was, uh, that, yeah. that was his claim to fame, right? Yes. You know, okay. Yeah. So. And then Lopper's like, trying to protect him and she's like grabbing on his foot on Piper's foot and he just fucking <laughs> kicks her off and that just sets off a whole shit storm and you know what it's that that heat that he brought with Hogan's massive charisma mm -hmm. that Vince was like you know what we can do something special here we can oh, do yeah. Wrestlemania you know you've heard the story where he put every dollar he had into this if it was a failure WWF was going to go under. Mm -hmm. There was just no doubt about that it. That would have been it. But you had Hulk Hogan. You had Hot Rod. I mean, the the biggest bad guy in wrestling with the biggest good guy in wrestling. There is just no way. And then you added Mr. T. You exactly. Know, Arguably golly. one of the biggest stars he, of the time yeah, coming I mean, off of uh, A-Team and being B.A. Oh, Baracus. Man. And, and uh, was Rocky Three already out? Yeah, I think it was. It was but 82. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. which so, Hogan had also come yeah. out in looking larger than life yeah. as Thunderlips. Yeah. You know, oh, so, man, he looks super massive compared oh, to Oh, yeah, a huge, man. I mean, he was like a, 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 a true giant compared yeah. to him. That made yeah. you see how small Stallone was yeah. despite being incredibly cut. I, I always thought he was as big as Arnold, and then when I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah. okay, Stallone's not. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you see Arnold size when you watch, you know, Conan and you see him with next to Wilt, you know what I mean? And you're yeah. like, oh shit, you're yeah, kind of small too, smallish. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, so right off the bat, like you know, the first two years he's fighting with Piper, and then you know, obviously he's got to move on, and then right. they introduce uh Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. Golly. Are we missing out on King Kong Bundy though? Yeah, it was kind of like a little feud. Okay. It wasn't like a big feud, okay. like you say, like what hot rod or Andre. Yeah. Gotcha. You know? But you know, again, Piper's fit. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, he's celebrating that thing. Hogan was celebrating like his three years as champ. And you see Bobby Heenan come out. And you're like, or No, you see Andre and he's congratulating him. And then you see Bobby Heenan come out. And yeah, they're you're like, you know, once you see Bobby Heenan, you're just like, oh, man, what the, a time the, for managers. The guys, greatest the manager. That's that's not even like for me. That's what everyone usually regards him. All his peers, everyone always regards Bobby as the greatest manager. When, when I got older and could appreciate yeah. what a manager did, yeah. Double A, I wanted to be a manager like the brain. Yes. I wanted to yeah. be the talker. And, yes. and gosh, who would we consider maybe the greatest living now? Probably Heyman, right? Heyman. It yes. is, it is all that is so but much in an influence, but it's so far away from what the brain can actually do for his wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Like I said, once he saw this man step out, it was just like an instant heat magnet. Oh, yeah, <laughs> everyone would just boo the fuck out of yeah. him. And then when you, you know, you find out, you know, because I was gonna say this too the storylines, man, the storylines were so great during mm -hmm. this period. 
you know, they have this drawn up that, you know, Hulk and Andre are friends. They've been friends for years. Right. He's proud. You know, Andre has been undefeated for so long, but he's never got a title shot. So Bobby starts whispering in his ear, you yeah. know, like, man, you really deserve it. He doesn't want to give you, he's been champ for three years. How many title shots have you gotten from Hogan? Man, that's classic you know? heat and right Andre there. Andre starts thinking, you know what? Man, I think I deserve this title shot more and than I, anyone else. I have to say, if you're a viewing audience member, you know what I mean? Like, imagine us maybe being our age or even a little younger, but watching it at that time, we would have been like, damn, those are kind of valid points. They you are. I mean? Yeah, like, you're like, right? You know, whereas a kid, I'm probably thinking to myself, like, no, no, don't tell him that no, stuff. It, well, like, not just that, but know? then you're like, man, don't listen to this guy. Well, right. You yeah, know? you recognize that he's a, yeah. a bad guy, a, a, weasel, a weasel, as they called him. Come on, man. You know, um, so yeah, totally. I mean, there's just that, like, you know, even in I think a young man's mind, you know, you're like, oh no, I know where it's going. The yeah. bad guy's giving him this venom, you know. And it's just it's so opposing because it's under the giant, you know, it's like God Lee, this might be the one force that could stop Hulkamania. Right. You know, this is a seven foot five, five hundred and fifty pound giant. You know, how the hell is Hulk Hogan gonna beat him? You know? Mm -hmm. And talk about someone looking small next to somebody, look at how Small yeah. Hogan look next to Andre. Yeah. Imagine how Stallone would have looked next yeah. to Andre. <laughs> yeah. So while all this is going on, setting up for WrestleMania three, what you have on the undercard is another guy that's rising through the ranks real quick. Mm -hmm. He's been Intercontinental Champion for over a year. The Macho Man. Oh Randy yeah, Savage. man. And he's going having this great, great feud with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. What a fantastic Golly. look too. The bandana, oh, the full beard. Yeah. The glasses, just the, the colors, right? Yeah, yeah man. the purple, the um, yellow. Uh, you know, he's just this dirty fucking heel. Yeah, you know, but he goes by the name Macho Man. That's right. Know? That's right. <laughs> and he wins by any means necessary. But he's up against one of the most top stars of all time, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Mm -hmm. And what look that guy had! Just oh, yeah. cut up like nobody's business. And I don't know if Steamboat was – was he Asian? Was there Asian? I think he's Hawaiian. But, oh, okay, Hawaiian. So I just remember being young and, yeah. like, everything, like, like that kind of reminded you of, like, Kung Fu or, like, a ninja was cool. Yeah. So I remember being like, wow, like, Steamboat's cool. Like, he yeah. reminded me of a – of a quick kick from uh from G.I. Joe. So and, I was like, oh, yeah. you know. And see, and, and the WWF gave him the dragon moniker. Right. Okay. So it was from that. You Very know? badass. So, man, you got these two highly athletic, mm -hmm. you know, dudes. They, they, You know, Macho Man's like six foot, six foot one, Steamboat six three. So now you're kind of getting like a little bit lower from like the Giants. Of, right. You know, the Hogan-Andre feud. You're kind of coming down, but, man, you're getting off this athleticism that you've never probably seen in the WWF. Yeah. You know, these guys are flying from the ring. Oh, yeah. They're doing all these cross bodies. You know, Ricky Steamboat, if you've never seen the hip toss from anyone, uh -huh. see it from Ricky Steamboat. <laughs> that guy has the cleanest, most beautiful hip toss you will ever see. You know, uh, he, did it, he did it on Jericho when he came back, you know. Right, that's right. And he's like, yeah. oh, and he just grabs you and. Boom. No one better to sell that for you either, probably than Jericho. But but man, what a time too for the IC belt, man! Like where that, man, that was just, belt is yeah, so... that belt was so hotly contested. I mean, everybody wanted that belt. We got it. Show yes. right here. Show right here. Though. Right here. There it is. I mean, at this, one time this, this belt was. I felt always felt like it was like man, it was like the gateway. Like it you was know, the you needed, gateway. You needed, you know, and and many parts of me always wish that they would have maybe done wrestling like that. Like you know, you were never maybe you should have never been able to get a shot until you'd won this at least once. You and, know, what and I that, mean? that time, man, people people contested it very hotly. You know, this was a very hot belt. Everybody wanted it. Everybody cheated for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. mean. This was usually now referred to as it was either the wrestler's belt or it was the bad guy belt. This was yeah. like always the yeah. closest that the bad guy was. Because I remember perfect come. having it. I remember Rude having it. Yeah. Did Jake ever have it? No, Jake yeah. never had it. Jake belt. never had any Jake titles, had a belt. which is a damn shame now that looking yeah. back at what a great, so great villain. It was either the bad guy belt or it was the stepping stone to becoming the heavyweight champion, mm -hmm. which was more or less for the good guys. Yeah. It was always more or less yeah. for that. Pretty much. Uh, you know, so man, you have that feud going. You know, the tag teams are just on fire. You got Heart Foundation, you got the British Bulldogs, you got the Rockers coming in. Man, what an exciting fucking team the Rockers are. You know, oh, you got gosh, yeah, the Brain Busters, Arn Anderson, mm -hmm. and Tilly Blanchard from the Four Horsemen. 
You know, do we have uh LOD at this time? Or yeah, yeah. Legion you got Doom, LOD coming Demolition. in. Demolition. Demolition. My God, the most dominating two, tag teams. I thought those two looked so cool they because did. they had the makeup. You know what I mean? They they the spikes. You know what I mean? The they songs. Looked, yeah, the songs. Man, the songs are just always. They so looked badass. big, big guys. You had even kind of like some. I like the Bushwhackers, Luke and Butch. Yeah. I mean, that was always funny to me that yeah. they're I, putting you in the pit. You I know started I mean? appreciating the Rockers a little bit later than probably what I should have. Mm -hmm. But, man, you, you see right. Sean and Marty at that time. Golly, you're yeah. so fluid. Oh, yeah. You know, the nip-ups, the yeah. super kicks, the, you know, the off the top. You know, I mean, golly. And I say the armpit thing. I'm thinking of the Nasty Boys. Nasty Those Boys. Nasty Boys who also were fun. These are stuff, too, that, again, I remember it so vividly because me, me and my dad would watch it. And he said we'd be doing these moves to each other and stuff but like that. But just all you know? those teams that were made mentioning man it's like future hall of famers future single stars oh, yeah. but man they're in classic tag teams too you know uh even strike force strike force was a pretty damn good team too why they lasted you know, who was it who tito was and rick martel oh yeah well, i remember yeah. liking tito yeah. uh santana a lot tito and, and uh rick martel uh the the, the model the model, model martel with arrogance. arrogance yeah i always remember your brother's story <laughs> saying that you know that they were close y'all were close and he smelled it he was like man it smelled like yeah you know he actually I mean? has two stories so he has that one <laughs> And he has it where Tito was hugging people, and he didn't want to hug. And Tito came and grabbed him too, and he got all his sweat on it. <laughs> so damn, yeah, they must yeah, have been like they must have been like ringside, man. Yeah. Your brother, shit, that's awesome. Yeah, man. man. So we got all these tag teams, and then we got a fucking guy from a, parts. a true tag team division, yeah. a true division, yeah. multiple teams. You know what I mean? That have a team name. That they're, they're a team. They have a team gimmick. You know. And then we got a man from parts unknown. This wild warrior, you mm -hmm. know, this ultimate warrior that's just coming out here. He's destroying opponents left and right just within minutes. How about know? that riff? Oh, dun, 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 and then the dun, run. Dun, 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 you just dun, see dun, this guy just bursting out, shaking the ropes. And, you're and I'm like, telling you, I don't know if those please. things on his arm were tight or they were just small, but they made him look so big. And I remember him always thinking of him as being like, under Hogan, like I was yeah. thinking, like I'm like yeah. he's my one and this is my two. Yes. This I remember thinking of Warrior as the guy I wanted to have this. Yes, because uh -huh. my two good guys, my would two have favorite two guys, would have the two. Yeah, yeah, and in my young mind, the, the good guys would be winning. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and and um, you know, obviously that leads up tells its own story, right? Leading and another up. great storyline, a, a whole almost year of build up to see, you know. Uh, the teasing the Royal Rumble mm -hmm. just to see how the people would react. That's what I read. Right. That Vince wanted to kind of see what the reaction would be. You know? Okay. And then, you know, the whole lead up to, you know, the them saving each other and not wanting to save each other. Yeah. And, you know, it just boils it down to WrestleMania 6 where it just couldn't contain it anymore. Title for title, the ultimate challenge, the immortal Hulk Hogan versus the ultimate warrior mm -hmm. in front of 67,000 people. I mean, golly. Um, after WrestleMania three, I would say that was almost the peak. Yeah, of that era too. Yeah, I'd have to still say WrestleMania three is like the peak powers of Hogan, the peak powers of the WWF. But golly, nineteen ninety was still just oh yeah wild. And we don't mean to glaze over like any of the Hogan we don't. Stuff no, no, earlier, no, no, no. That's, that's a, another great story. Great story. So the that's whole... a year story of build up from WrestleMania four where they first team up mm -hmm. to where it the mega powers, yeah, right? where to it just they explode by WrestleMania five the next year. Yeah, you know. But what a great story, right? You team, you get your two big faces at that time, mm -hmm. you know. And they're kicking ass all over the, that whole year. They're just kicking yeah, ass. Yeah, they seem unbeatable. Over. Like I was like, and it and was. Then, I remember being like, oh, like he turned good. Like that's cool. Like right? I like, I like the him now. The madness and the mania. Yeah. It well, was like, I always like Miss Elizabeth too, because she was like the only woman, the only pretty woman you saw around. Really, so I was like, oh, you know, like I oh, like her. Or uh, not so scary, much back scary. then. No, oh, she was please. scary to me back then. Yeah, sure is. I was definitely more of a Miss Elizabeth guy. And in my mind, I remember thinking, too, I was always like, oh, I hope she ends up with Hulk Hogan instead. Uh, you know what I mean? That's what uh, I always would think. Because I was uh, like, oh, man, like, you know, this is how I felt like about, like, you know, Hermione with Harry Potter. I was like, why the fuck are you with Ron? Like, man, Ron sucks. Man, what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, it's truly a character that you can definitely appreciate as an older guy. For me now, I'm just like, sure wow, can. how rich. 
Yeah. Damn, man. Randy Savage was so fantastic. The promos, you know? the intensity, mm -hmm. you know, the, the look. Oh, yeah. Man, the athleticism that man had, you know, golly. Yeah. And it all boils down. It, it, it comes down to Elizabeth, uh, you know, Macho Man gets his The lust in your eyes. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're just like, I mean, God, the man could cut a promo like nobody. Yep. I mean, it's and like, damn, he's good. Golly, it just boils down to one of the, I think, one of the best main events in Mania, WrestleMania Five. Yeah. You know, that's just a great, great WrestleMania. Definitely, definitely. But again, a year of storylines, you yes. know, that you really just don't see too much. You know, the, the build up from Hogan and Andre, the build up from Hogan and Warrior, you know, the build up from Hogan and Macho, the Macho Steamboat mm. build up. Or how about the other old rivalry, Ultimate Warrior and Ravishing Rick? Oh, yeah. Golly. Definitely. Those guys took their rivalry on for like almost three years. I mean, here's a time, guys, in wrestling where it's like, you know, yes, we're talking about these. Okay, here's what you're doing. Number one, you're playing to the strengths of your roster, no doubt. But your card, your whole card is still good because you've got those fantastic tags, which we just talked about. You're doing wonderful things with them. Excuse me. Well, not just that, but then you got Hogan, then you got Macho, then you got Warrior, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, oh, Lee, what about the bad guys? Tags? Like I said, the bad guys, listen, you've got Jake, you've got Perfect, you've got uh, Ravish, you know, Ravish, 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 I mean, it's like those are three of some of the best heels ever of all time, you know what I mean? And still, Piper's still there at this time, Piper's too. Piper's still there, and too. And you got to think about your other good guys, like your JYD. Yep. These guys were uh, Hill, Hillbilly Jim, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Mm -hmm. These guys were all in that animated cartoon yes, that when, when that came yep. out. I thought that was like the fucking bee's knees. I was like, holy shit, this yeah. is the coolest shit ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? I did it myself with that bee's knees comment. But <laughs> go back on that. But anyway, it was fucking very neat. I was watching that cartoon because I'm like, wow, now I get to see Hogan and, and these other guys that I like too. Because it was like in, in your mind, you just categorized them. Like it, it, it worked itself out. It made it, it was so palatable even to a very young person. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, that it just, it just worked. You know what I mean? It worked so damn well. But what about maybe the one bad guy we haven't said that was pretty much dominating that late 80s? What about the million-dollar man, Chad DiBiase? Man. This guy was main eventing manias. He was main eventing SummerSlams, mm -hmm. Survivor Series. This guy was the the guy you fucking hated the most. Virgil. You know? I mean, the laugh, the music. Uh, that everyone had a price. And most yep. of the time, he was right. Yep. You know? it it just like, up to no good constantly. Where I was like, He Damn, brought man, the championship guy. bill. Yeah. He I paid like, Andre to beat Hogan because he couldn't do it himself. <laughs> I mean, guys, go back and Google you know, YouTube some old Million Dollar Man stuff. The kid bouncing the basketball oh, for the 100 man. bucks. Just bats it away as he's at... Dribble he it a, a damn hundred times. Away. Dribble yeah. it a hundred times, right? Something like that. I'll give you a hundred dollar bill. This little kid, like out of the car, he might have been a plant. I don't know. No, but no, either, they said they were really upset about it. Either like, way, that kid was, was really like, super upset. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I think we do get in this time too. We do get Razor Ramon. Diesel. Uh, they came in later. A little bit later. About 92, 93. I remember those promos too. So yeah. They did a lot more vignettes back then, and they were very, very damn good. But uh, uh but man, you, you know the, the fucking nicknames, a million dollar man, mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Perfect, uh, Mr. Wonderful, you know. <laughs> How about the Mr. Perfect video, the devil oh, man. man shooting the basketball Golly. backwards, the, all the strikes, yep. and, strike. and they said a lot of that stuff he did do, yeah, right? He did do yeah. I mean, that's he was yeah. a man. If you look back at Mr. Perfect's Kurt matches, Henning, golly, what a technician that dude yeah. was in ring ability, that Up the ass. that suplex that he did. I and, mean, yeah, that bridge suplex. Perfect. Always perfect. Always with the tiptoes. Yeah. Always. Even when he did it with Big Show. Yep. He still had the tiptoes. He got Big Show's fucking big ass and landed perfect. These were guys that, you know how sometimes we'll look at some of the, the newer guys and we'll see him do stuff. Like when we would see Cena do his kind of clover, and we'd be like, man, set it in. Like, set, set it, it in. in. Yeah. Even, even with later on when Jericho wouldn't set in the walls, I'd yeah. be like, it looked like, terrible. Set, yeah. I'm yeah. like, the last one I saw him really do a good on was Daniel Bryan. And he really, he had him up on, on his chest and he set it in and he locked his knees. And I'm like, that's how you fucking do it. Cause mm -hmm. we all tried that move on each other. And you're like, that hurts. other way, it doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Like, it's just you're sitting on my back. But the other way, I'm like that's and it looks better it, it looks does. better it and really these does. were the athletic guys that could do that these guys did not do that look at jake's ddt that was when he ddt steamboat on the outside on the concrete. that, that yes. was fucking like and he knocked him out for real <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like these guys are putting it in we always talk about rick rude's fucking oh physique. The, the, I mean, the physique but even the rude awakening looks vicious oh, yeah. when he does oh it. yeah a, a, God, a reverse really. kind of stunner. It is a reverse yeah, stunner. I mean, yeah. but it, and he was so uh tall. He looks so tall. He, he's All about legs. six three. Yeah. I remember thinking that, even though I didn't like Rick Rude as a kid, I remember thinking it was cool that he would kiss all the women. I was like, man, look and at then, this guy. He's hey, hey, the but chicks. see, 
like, what about that storyline too? Like when he gets that one chick, that random chick, and she says no, and she's like, I'm married to another wrestler, and he's like, who? Jake the Snake Roberts. Man, <laughs> the people fucking pop. That yeah. starts a rivalry. And then you know what the asshole does? He put Cheryl's face on his That's tights. Right. <laughs> Golly. Right I mean, where his fucking balls are at. This you is know? this is heel heat 101, baby. Like, Golly. you know, to, to steal like, some wrestling terms. Call, excuse me. Man. You know, not being in the business, but as a fan, you know what I mean? And, and I know. You know oh. put her on these trunks? Like, I mean, on, it's, it's like there's a story for everyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> if your dad's watching with you or, you know, your older brother or something like that, they're still going to appreciate uh, uh, what's going on? And I don't know if you know this, but that my mom was actually in love with Rick Rude. She <laughs> loved Rick hey, Rude. So there you go, guy, man. The jawline, the fuck. He had the classic '80s mustache, the curls. But you I'm know like, what, Tim? How intimidating did he look, though? He mm -hmm. did look intimidating. Like that was a guy you didn't want to piss off on the street. It was oh, like yeah. near you. Yeah, you know, wait. you're like. Where's the warrior at? You know, <laughs> you're right, looking for, for someone real. like the warrior. Real, come like, in. I would never bother that guy for a fucking autograph. But you know what else too? And, and again, being that we're comic book fans, to me, it made comics in a sense more believable. Like yes. guys can look like this. This is what they look like. We're, we're seeing these guys, like I said, with the rockers just leap. We're seeing these guys, you know, ultimate warriors picking up Hulk Hogan over his yeah. arm. This is a 300 pound Hulk oh, Hogan. Yeah. And he's going like, ooh, you know. And you're like, like, wow, there's these things are capable of you know doing you and know? plus too they always made like this like uh unbelievable comeback from some crazy yeah. move or chair shot yeah. or whatever and i'm like man, they're like the real life superheroes or whatever yes. I mean, they're, they're bigger they're stronger they look better than than on the average man you know what i mean so it was like but you know what they the guys, can do these things they put the effort in to the promos are so intense on both sides you know they put the effort in the moves look real you know the storylines were great. They were always months in advance. You're a mm -hmm. big fan of storylines. I that is my you know? favorite thing. Telling a good story. You have it. clear cut bad guys. You have clear cut good mm -hmm. guys. You have great pay per views. It was just it was an exciting time in the rock and wrestling era. Yeah, you earthquake know? and tugboat. Earthquake, and I've, tugboat. I've, I've I've told this story multiple times on this podcast about how I wrote to Hulk Hogan and I got back. Now I know, but it was like a pre printed. Postcard, but, still, but I had cool it for years. That? I may still have it somewhere. But oh my gosh, it was so cool! Like thanks, you know. Yeah, little, you uh, actually got some poster. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting better. I'm saying my prayers. My and I, I used to have that in my mirror in my bedroom for yeah. the longest How time. How many people believe that message? Say yeah. your prayers, eat your vitamins. Mm -hmm. You know, it's golly. It was. That's how I said that. The character of Hulk Hogan is such a great character. You know, even though the dude might not be that that hulk hogan but right. the hulk hogan the was a character. great role of model. course of course yeah. totally totally so guys again this is wwf in the 80s this is it um it's making you a fan yes the foundation has been laid i mean I, i'm all in at this point i'm like this is my shit i love this did they get when did they get this belt double a did they uh, it was to, in 87 87 so toward, mm -hmm. kind of towards the end otherwise hogan had that that smaller looking one right that yeah. he'd always he had like about around three there. before this one but guys, we are nearing up on our second break of the night. Again, it's going to just sound like a blip. I see a bunch of comments rolled yeah, in, Double too. A. We cannot wait for <laughs> you to join the conversation with us, which we invite you to do every Friday night. We come live on Facebook, and we want you to be part of the podcast. Talk about the show with us through the comments. So we're going to take a quick blip of our break for our audio listeners. But again, the full show always available on YouTube.com. We'll be right back. Guys, you're commenting like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Double A's got a lot of reading to do. Yeah, oh my gosh. I, I wonder who stuck with uh, us here through all that. Going uh, I'm going to have to scroll up here a second, uh, which I never know how to do because after a few beers, scrolling becomes kind of not the easiest. Okay, thing right, right here. Okay. Keep going now. Okay, keep going down. Oh, let did say hi. Uh, yes. Still mm -hmm. there. Uh, say when. Oh, okay, right here. There we here. go. Right here where Joe says, Austin316 says, I just kick your ass. <laughs> Indeed it does, Joe. Indeed it does. Uh, Joe says, WWF had a show called Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Okay. Oh, you okay. Go. Well, then maybe where the name originates from. See, I didn't uh, know that. Joe says, Andre a Giant. Also, they had wrestling playing cards at the time. Oh, wrestling card, wrestling playing cards. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm sure they had wrestling everything at that lunchbox, everything. At that time? Yeah. Yeah. It was always tough for me because I had to choose between like that and like my – he man or my yeah. spider man or yeah. uh steve says i'm with double a hogan brought the game yeah i mean there's 100 percent 100 percent. you can't deny the man he is impact. on my mount rushmore of wrestlers mm -hmm. and and mine too and on yours he is on mine too 
Rich says Hulk Hogan, I think, is the godfather of wrestling. He put wrestling on the map. Yeah. If there was mm -hmm. always one guy that everyone knew was a wrestler, it was always Hulk Hogan. More so than Ric Flair. Yeah. yeah. Way leave, more than Ric Flair. Leave everything else out of your mind that we know because we probably shouldn't know it anyway. You know what I mean? And doesn't make it right. No, we're not condoning that. But we're talking about, again, the character and your contribution to that. Was O.J. Simpson a great running back? Absolutely, he was great. <laughs> it's not that's not a question. You know what I mean? Was we talked about this before on our sports episode? Was Pete Rose a great baseball player? Yeah. Yes, he was. Those things are undeniable facts. Now they had other things going on in their lives, not so good. But which one of us doesn't? Not condoning it by saying that. Just not saying. Condoning. Just saying. We're ta not talking about those things. We're talking about these things. Yeah. So right now, the 1980s portion of the WWF before the WWE. What else we got? Uh, he's, Joe says, bro, Terry, kayfabe, kayfabe brother. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. My bad. Uh, the Hulkster. Rich says, I think every kid who watched him did the tearing for their shirt and doing the ear gesture. I mean, I did. Uh, I didn't tear no. too many shirts because my mom would freak out. And be like, I couldn't. Why are you tearing? I couldn't clothes? do it. Yeah. I was like, man, yeah. this. And it's that's what made, that's what even made me believe even more in Hulk Hogan because I was like, damn, this. I, tearing I'm like, a t-shirt like, is really, you know. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Fuck. Now uh, I put the little cut at the top. Then I just. <laughs> Joe says no hold bar was a hit too. Hey Joe, maybe you should do that and now watch this. Oh yeah, there we go. I want that on now. Watch this. No holds barred. R.I.P. to Zeus. Uh, Rich says Ultimate Warrior was my favorite shit. Who was it? Your I big mean, brother. I, that's yeah. your big brother. Was that's, that's still his guy. to this day? To this day, still yeah. his guy. And he has his own wine now. Ultimate Warrior wine. Uh, Joe says, remember when Earthquake came in and with Dino Bravo and crushed the Ultimate Warrior? That <laughs> Dino Bravo reference. Yeah. I, I don't remember that yeah, specifically. It, it, it's in like in the whole storyline. Like if you go back and watch WrestleMania six, that's in there, like of how they're both like saving each other. Yeah. <laughs> that Tino Bravo sucked. <laughs> yeah. Uh Joe says, dude, fans in the eighties, especially in the South, took it real. Oh, yes, yeah. they did. Oh, yeah, yes, for did. sure, man. Uh Joe said busted his ass with that coke and that Jimmy <laughs> Superfly. Damn, it made a loud ass it sound. Did. I remember watching that back. I was like, holy shit, man. Uh Joe says, remember we hated Bobby Heenan, but loved him later. Yeah, uh, totally. The Rich says, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no bigger heat magnet. Like I said, if if you were managed by this guy, you, you already knew you were an asshole. I'm telling you, know? you <laughs> there are certain guys the way that I wish he could have could have managed, man. You talk about your Roman Reigns or your Brock Lesnar. That's what I'm like, saying. It's like right away. Heyman's great. You yeah. didn't even have to know the wrestler. If, if you just saw Bobby Heenan leading this guy out, it was like, oh, this guy's fucking sucks. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> He's an asshole. I, I bet he, Heenan could have made guys that we knew were good in the ring, but they just sucked on the mic. Like guys like Steve Black, yeah. he could have probably made yeah. them interesting you know what i mean like he could have probably made those guys like real heel heat you know what i mean <laughs> uh let me see for me i think another bad guy was a million dollar man we touched on it we we're kind of a little late on that one yeah sorry yeah. we got in the comments kind of late guys sorry. uh joe says uh yeah i think rocky helped hogan out yeah it did it boosted hogan oh, up big to time. another stratosphere yeah you were in a move a major movie you know uh steve says don't forget rick the nature boy flair Woo! we didn't forget him uh steve but he wasn't in this spirit he was you know fronting the nwa he was leading that charge you know, which if you ask me about between WWF and NWA, I'm more of an NWA guy. So breaks uh, my heart to hear that. But this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, Joe says uh, Bobby might have been after Bobby might have been after Giant. Uh, let me see. Rich says uh, I think the most psychological wrestler performed was Jake the Snake. He Absolutely. Can get in your mind. Yeah, I mean that guy was fucking intense without being intense. Maybe the only right? guy that could cut a promo without raising his voice. He never raised not his voice. Freaking man. out. Not, he was just he know. had that bag, you mm -hmm. know, with Damien, and he would just look. How about you. those eyes? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was like he was looking at you. We both met him, yeah. and he's still like that. It's like <laughs> it's like he's like that same like you said about Rick Rude. Yeah. I'm like. I I'm going to do my thing with Jake, and then I'm going to leave. I'm not even <laughs> going to try to bullshit with this guy. Uh, Joe says Bobby took bumps for a while. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Uh, Andre was there and congratulated him on his first title. Yeah, that was like the whole storyline, yeah. you know, that Andre was always there for That's him. That's right. You know, it's funny. Uh, you know, Joe, you mentioned the uh, he didn't take in the bumps, whatever. You know, much of my, my, the brief time I spent in wrestling school, a total of eight hours, I wanted to ref or maybe be a manager or whatever. But what I was learning was, of course, you got to learn – what everybody learns, which is how to fall down, because more than likely that's going to come into play at some point. So you can't not know those things, um, you know, but it sucks and it hurts. So 
Uh, Rich says that a million dollar man too had a bad influence on Andre as well. That's right. It is right. Uh, Joseph Dirty Dragons, <laughs> Steamboat were two of the better workers at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the time, I was, as a kid, I loved the characters. I mean, who did it? You know, larger than life, like true character again, like superheroes. That's what I'm it was saying. like they another just, bag of superheroes. They just feel bigger, right? Yeah, it's like golly. And I mean, in my yeah. mind, it was probably like I thought of it just the way I thought of like here's DC, here's Marvel, here's Star Wars, here's Transformers, Thundercats, GI Joe, He Man, and then here's wrestling. It was say, like, these are all superheroes. And that's the thing too is like what you don't see in wrestling today. Like everyone uses their damn name. You know, you, like we said, we had look at the bad guys I just named Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Perfect, Ravishing, you know, the Snake, Million Dollar Man, you know, even the good guys, the Ultimate Warrior, the Immortal Hulk Hogan, you know. The, yeah, you, the think our real, you, think, you think we're using our real names right now? You think my real name is CM Chuck and this is really double A? I mean, come now, on, guys. You know, now it's like Kenny Omega, Daniel Bryan, you know. Uh, Although Kenny Omega is kind of cool because it's like the Omega, part, but still, you know, know, there's like no, there's like no flair. Yeah, almost, like the Kenny you know? part kind of sucks. Like you know Matt I mean? Jackson, Nick Jackson, you know, Mark yeah. Briscoe, Jay Briscoe, you know, <laughs> like come on, guys, you know. I need to get. Uh, I'm trying. What happened to Boogeyman? You know what I mean? Like at least it's like <laughs> it's trying. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Rich says Razor had that title too. That's right. Uh, yeah. He also said, "I think the tag teams back then were awesome." Yeah, I mean they were totally just the, golly, what a what a division. You know, as much as Sheamus and Cesaro was cool, it took them. Did they ever even get a name together? It was like they were always just like Sheamus and Cesaro. They eventually they did. called no, them no, something. They did. They had a. It took a bar. A, the bar. It took yeah. a while, and that sucks. That's not a great yeah, name. It does. You know what I mean? It's like you know, but here were two guys. It could have been. You gotta like have. We're gonna get into it. I'll I'll talk about it a little bit then. But you know, you gotta like match your costume and like you know have a name together or whatever. Yeah, that's what's yeah. cool about like the Hollywood Blondes with like Austin and Pillman. Yeah, you know, they matched up and everything. Right, you know that right. was cool. You know that that made it. You know, like we said, the Rockers. I mean, like that was oh, fucking man, cool. The gear, or you know, the music, totally. oh, demolition, yeah. Legion of Doom. Yeah. It's like you're a team. You know what I mean? You know, you didn't want to see those guys go solo because they were so good together. Uh, and this is interesting because I've heard Joe's not the only one I've ever heard of this. He goes, Demolition were my favorite tag team. I didn't even know of LED, so I was like, who the fuck are these guys? Uh, and I've heard that team before. Really? Okay. I've heard a lot of people because WWF was seen more mm -hmm. that they always thought they Demolition, came from Mid South. No, no uh, that was a team that they got put together. No, Demolition. but Legion of Doom because they were previously. No, they were a Georgia Championship. Georgia wrestling. Championship. They were the Road Warriors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but it was like people see more of Demolition that when they saw the Road Warriors, they're like, "Who the fuck are these guys?" It's because you know? wherever you were seen, exactly. More. I think I've told this story before, but you know, we, well, I was born in Georgia. That's my dad was stationed or whatever. I don't remember it, but he would watch a lot of that, so he knew LOD. Yeah. So yeah, but as the Road him, Warriors. Yeah, Georgia Championship Wrestling. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, he watched a lot of Flair too. So yeah. He always knew about Flair. But so. I've heard, you know, like my brother brothers always thought demolition were first they they didn't even know led until they came in so when i was old enough to watch it we weren't there no more so i think i remember that too. i remember demolition yeah, the, so, the makeup and the, yeah. the stuff i was like oh they these guys did it first. uh rich is with you he says natural disasters were good too that's right the uh, natural disasters what a great team typhoon and earthquake yeah. that's cool that's a cool yeah. thing right and the one where right. the red one yeah. where the blue yeah and before he was tugboat yeah and i liked when he i thought he was cool and he, he was, was another tugboat. hogan guy yeah yeah, and I didn't like when he turned bad, and I was like, "Oh man, now tugboats typhoon like that sucks." Uh, Joe says, "One year in San Antonio, the motto attacked Santana before the match. I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> some of the best vignettes, yeah, some of the best. One hundred, the best man." Joe says, "DiBiase was the best heel." Pr Bruce Pritchard says, "It's Vince in real life." Oh, really? Interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> Joe says, "Mr. Perfect vignettes were perfect." Pun intended. Yep. Dem I watched them the other day, and I was like, "These are still fucking funny as hell." Yeah. Uh, Joe says, "Go up a little bit." Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, guys, you're getting here. Uh, yeah, oh, I might have jumped too many. Uh, just a little, still, there a little we go. bit more. Okay, right there. there we go. Rich says the perfect suplex was just perfect, and I think the DDT. No one can do it better than Jake the Snake. That's when it was a finishing move, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that, that, a lot of that stuff got taken away because you know, you're just doing DDTs in the match. You know what I mean? That move is vicious. That was a vicious move. It's a great move. <laughs> Makes my neck hurt just thinking about it. Joe right. says Jake had the best promos. He also said Rick Rude would tell all the ugly women to sit down. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I tell that. Rick <laughs> says he was a fan of the American Dream. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, uh, you know, and he was a little bit watered down in WWF. Yeah. I mean, they 
Yeah. They put them in the but again, if you see him in the NWA, man, you see what the American dream is all about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I did like him too, Rich. I thought he, when he got there, so I thought it was cool because I thought, oh, this guy has a different type of body than uh, everybody yeah. else. Yeah, and it made and I still like the you know that was all cool. Yeah. To me, so. <laughs> uh, Steve says when Hogan slammed the giant, I mean, oh man, golly, I can't think of another iconic yeah, moment. That was that. amazing. That was and like it didn't even look so like cool. Andre gave him any give whatsoever. Right. It looked like Hogan just like picked him straight up from the ground and <laughs> talk about. The legend of Hulk Hogan taking oh, off. Man. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, because Andre was was everything. You know, uh, I mean? Joe says, uh, like I did, the very common fan knew Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. I mean, who didn't know who Hulk Hogan was to this day? I, it, I was either going to wear this shirt or my Hulkamania shirt, and I have pictures of my Hulkamania shirt. <laughs> and I've met Hulk Hogan. I've never met this guy, but you know, <laughs> uh, Joe says wrestling was labeled as what Hulk Hogan did. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, totally. Hey, Lucky's in the house. Oh, what up, Luck? Says he's checking us out while he's at work. Oh man, great awesome. last show, Luck. Really awesome. loved Renaissance Man, brother. Very, very good. Uh, let me see. Very uh, good show. Joe says in the eighties it was WWF, NWA, and World Class. Based here in Texas with the, the Von Erics, yeah, yep. Uh, and then Lucky chimes in. Brutus the barber. I we totally didn't mention the, the barber shop. Cave, the barber yeah. shop, obviously the site of the fateful <sighs> Sean man. Michaels and Marty Janetti yeah. break. I remember seeing that live and being like, I, I wanted to roll it. real tears. Like, I cannot believe that that just happened. <laughs> that's a fucking brutal moment. And I thought he was really hurt because I thought that yeah. was real glass. You know that what I mean? Is, I was like, that's cool, right? Great cool look, man. Yeah. Brutus the Barber. I always liked him. Me and my dad were always doing the, the hair chopping thing. Yeah. I mean, well, how cool is that too, right? Yeah. Like, oh, and he man. it was like a, a pair of a hedging head shears. Yeah. And I'm like, man, what a shitty barber if using that <laughs> hair. But. Uh, Joe says, do you think the fact that we know too much uh, behind the scenes kills a little bit more today? Yeah. No, I think what it is is that the wrestlers don't care too much. Mm -hmm. I that think too. that's what it, they give us too much information. It's I don't them know, themselves. I don't know what's going on with the women right now, the women's division, but I just like watched a bunch of TikToks of like Nia Jax and. Uh, and uh, that's Charlotte what, Flair hanging out, like they're doing the I'm dances, saying. and it's, that's funny, and that's cool. I'm a cool, grown up, but, but but they're ruining it for us right, now, right? You know, it was like, come on, like the rule was if you're a bad guy, you stay over here, if you're a good guy, you stay over here. You never go to the same gas stations, you never go to the same restaurants ever. So it kind of makes me wonder, right? Doubly, like all the shit that Vince gets as a promoter or whatever, I'm like, well, what did he just get soft in his old age or what? Because I'm like, apparently. I guess with the curtain pulled back, he's like, yeah, whatever. Like on your off time, do so, whatever. You know? Honestly, I, I think it's because of the wrestlers that we know too much. And we all know that they're all friends and they're all on here, even though they're supposed to be hating each other. It mm -hmm. just, it doesn't make it real anymore. I know? love this one right here from Lucky. Bam, bam, oh, Bigelow. And he was in that time period. One man. of the biggest guys that could Best, move. Yeah. Like cartwheels. Headliner uh, of WrestleMania. Moonsaults. Headliner of WrestleMania 11. This is a guy, Delay, that I thought looked truly terrifying with the freaking flames tattooed you know on what? his fucking head. So when I saw him, he was with Luna. Mm. And I thought they were both very terrifying. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Luna had, had the her veins, part. right? Yeah. Tattooed on and her then head. he had his. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And he looked super big. And he's in that big onesie. Uh, but man, with the kick, flames, kick monster ass in WWF, really ECW, bad ass guy. in WCW. That guy kicked now, a lot of ass. Delay, was Vader here at this time? Yeah, he was, but he was in the AWA. Okay, so it wasn't it wasn't in WWE. He, he did, came later. He came in like in ninety five or ninety six. So in, maybe in that little lull period you're talking about. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah. Also, uh, to who, who did I think about when we when you mentioned him? I know I mentioned earlier King Kong Bundy, but those kind of like bigger guys, those guys. Oh man, Big Boss Man, Big Boss Man. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah that was. I thought that was a cool gimmick too. Kamala, he was like, a cop. like you said, yeah, Kamala, Kamala, the Ugandan giant yeah. man. Uh, uh, Rich the, says. Do you think wrestling would be where it's at without Hogan? Would there be no. someone else that could put? No, nobody, nobody could. Not, not for that period of time. Not for that long period of time. Now, Double, have you read anything about like? Did he write his own promos or was like the, he had to all that stuff? He had to because there, there was wasn't only, really writers. Back no, then, right? it was only Vince and Pat Patterson and maybe two other guys. The you had rest, to get your own shine. You had to get your own. The heat. rest was everything was up to you. Yeah. You know, just get the message out there. You know what you have to say. Yeah. You're selling yourself. You're trying to make your own money, essentially. You know, you talk people into the into the building. That's how you get paid. Mm -hmm. You know. So talk about that for a second. Now think about the creator. We talked about two uh, of the most now incredible creators. Yeah, you don't need that anymore. Last week, you know, we talked about George Lucas Stanley, mm -hmm. two of the greatest creators, putting those words in the mouths yes. of people. May the force be with you. You know, uh, 
with great power comes great responsibility. I mean, these are things that are like ingrained in us now. Yeah. Look at the one we sent. Say your prayers. Each of us. He pandered to the kids. Yes. He's like, I, I'm a good guy. Like, look, you know, you can look up to me. You can trust me. He even wore a cross. Yes, okay, he wore did. Like a little cross. Like a yes, little bit of a It was subtle. a big moment. No, yeah, it was a big person. moment when Andre ripped it off. Right. It was right. like, whoa. He yeah. ripped off the cross. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it was like, uh, that was uh, so much stuff with Hogan that was very. Um, you couldn't do it with anyone else. I'm sorry. Yeah. You couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, as hot as Ric Flair was, I mean, no. Hulk Hogan put it put wrestling on his back. He put it on his back, and you know wrestling what it he is. He was, you know, at that time as a kid, my favorite cartoon was He-Man. He was the real life He-Man. Again, I called him Superman. I've called him He-Man. Yeah, I mean, a big guy, Six blonde eight, hair. Pounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tan, super tan. Remember your He-Man one was tan? Yeah. You were like, how did, yeah. he, how did He-Man get a tan? You know? <laughs> Yeah, so no, I, Rich, I don't think anyone else but Hulk I, Hogan I also don't that. think that, Rich. Yeah. Uh, Joe says, back in the day, you came up in a tag. If you excel uh, one year, you get the IC, then you get the big belt. Yeah, that's the way it always mm -hmm. worked. Uh, Lucky says, have you guys seen Peanut Butter Falcon? Nice uh, wrestling. I have out. seen it. Oh. Uh, Lucky, that is a great, great wow. man. Talk about okay. tearjerker. Right. If you listen to now, watch this. Uh, double A. Uh, between me, Joe, and uh, and Lucky, you don't want to go to the movies with us. We'll just be crying the whole time. <laughs> the three of us. But uh, you, I want you guys to do that on now. Watch this. If you guys, I'm sure Joe has seen it. Hey, guys, Joe says actually we gotta watch that. <laughs> you, you guys gotta watch it. Fantastic. Watch that with my girl. And man, I had to like excuse myself. I was like, Damn. let me go here. I got something in my eye. I was like, oh my Damn. gosh, this movie. I don't think anyone believes that in you anymore. I know. I know. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf is fantastic. Hey, the, the Dakota Fanning gal. Yeah, okay, the, she's okay, very good. Okay. Is that her name? Dakota Fanning? Is it saying L or Dakota? The other one. The one, uh, the John, one John, from Dakota John, John Johnson's daughter. Oh, Dakota Johnson. Dakota Johnson. Okay, okay. That's her last name, Johnson. Duh, what a dumbass. <laughs> but uh, she's fantastic. And yes, they're, I won't ruin the cameos for you, but okay. they're badass. Okay. And it's really good. It's so really good. I, I bought, I watched that movie. Look, I bought it on Prime and then I went and I purchased it. That's okay. what I say, right? I got to have rewatchability. <laughs> and when I buy it, I, I bought it on Amazon, even though I had already. Uh, pre rented it or whatever you call it. Uh, Robert in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, Brutus has a great cameo in Thunder in Paradise. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Thunder in Paradise, the Hogan one. Rob Kubis in the house. Uh, King's Indian, guys. This is the man I've been talking about. Uh, Rob, I get you give you a big shout out at the beginning of the show, brother. You get to go back and look. But Rob, a wonderful wrestling fan, owns a pair of the I don't know. There are they there, but the the original Bret Hart glasses. Oh, uh, I have a great picture. Shit. He let me wear them, man, with the elastic band. Damn. And I was like, these are one of the fucking coolest great. fucking props in wrestling. That moment, Golly. that thing that Bret did was so cool. Man, it was. I right? would look forward to seeing yeah. him give the glasses to a kid because I would imagine being that kid and That's getting that. That's fucking cool. So very the cool, uh, Rob. You got to write a song about hey, wrestling. What another cool nickname, right? The Hitman. The Hitman. That's yeah. one of the best name. Damn. That's, that's badass. The hitman? Yeah. Shit. I'm going to be called like the assassin when I go like Chuck the assassin. <laughs> um, uh, Joe says he would kick ass with Bam Bam in the wrestling game. Oh, oh yeah. Bam Bam was really good to be. He was a really good one to be in the in the old game. He Lucky. would do that cartwheel, I think. Yeah. He would do that cartwheel around the ring. <laughs> Lucky says fighting with my family. Also a good wrestling movie. I liked it a lot. I thought it was a really good one. That one I haven't seen. It was good. When okay. I had Epics for that free trial, oh, it came okay. on and I liked it. Okay. It was good. Cool. I got, oh, no, I did see it. That's the, the page story. Yeah. Yeah, I did yeah. see that one. Yeah, that one was really good. Yeah, yeah really good. Uh, Joe says those coked up '80s promos were the shit. They oh, sure were, man. Totally, man. You hey, the coke. Yeah, that was the <laughs> '80s, man. I don't. Not just Gordon Gecko was on coke. Yeah, I mean, man. <laughs> uh, Steve says, "Who was the bigger wrestler, size wise?" I'd have to go Andre, right? I think it would be Andre. Yeah, um, even if his uh, size was exa exaggerated, I think. You, you know what? Uh, Seven foot and. You know, uh, size wise, Steve, you might want to look at Haystacks Calhoun. Mm, Haystacks Calhoun. He was like 600 pounds or maybe even Yokozuna. Uh, that's, uh, Those Yoko, guys are Yoko was pretty big. big. Yoko was pretty damn big in the body wise. Man, guys, these comments are kicking major ass. Guys, we really uh, appreciate it. Rich says, we here. can't forget about the commentators. They help put these wrestlers' names out there. Wonderful. Gorilla Monsoon. The body Ventura, you know, those they Vince did. McMahon. They did. Yeah, Vince But McMahon Gorilla and Jesse, when you oh, hear those man. guys, golly. Yeah. When Bobby would get on too, when he knew when to get on, man, he'd be tearing them up, man. Joe says, I get the eye allergies at times too. 
as a, as a pair of guys that wear headphones uh, once a week and talk <laughs> about stuff, but definitely appreciate commentators. I would have loved to have done that and just been a and, color man. But you man. know what? Rich is right. I mean, they made the wrestling flow. If you hear the commentators now, oddly, they always bicker and fight with each other, and it really, really does yeah. take away from the action in the ring. And, it and really how, does. how much of it is it promoting the next thing? It's That's always about it's blah, like, blah, man, blah, WWE backlash. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I want to hear, like, you know, sometimes I don't even know what moves are called anymore because they don't talk about that anymore. You know what I mean? Steve says, good flick. Uh, Robert says, I have one quoting Stone Cold's more beer promo. Yes. <laughs> and here we are. Right on, Rob. <laughs> uh, and then Rich, uh, another one. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Hitman was just a great wrestler. Man, just, mm-hmm. again, the saying, the, the look. You know the pink tights. Oh Ali. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The music at the that music. time too. Man. Ali. Joe says I think the Hogan Macho Elizabeth storyline was my favorite of the eighties. Oh okay, very interesting. Yeah, no, that was a, a totally great one. And then Joe says Mean Gene. Yo, Mean Gene. That was one of my favorite guys. I thought he was so cool. I was like, man, this let guy, me tell you something, Mean Gene. Yeah, he. I was always thinking as a kid, says he gets to interview all these guys. They're like all so cool. Like I was like, that must be like the coolest job, you know? Like that's what I remember thinking. And he would uh, talk shit too. Mean Gene had his moments of talking <laughs> that's shit. That's why he's Mean Gene. Exactly. He was. In fact, I remember being a kid thinking, I was like, he doesn't seem that mean oh. to me. And then Lucky brings up another great manager. Who didn't hate Jimmy Hart with his damn megaphone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get it. Get it. We, we both beat him? Golly. We yes, we did. Him. Yes, we did. One of the nicest guys. Have you, have you seen this online? The the picture of him? No. Shows a picture of, of Jimmy Hart doing, uh, I guess, a small local show. I don't know how recent this is or whatever. He's helping put up the chairs oh, and clean up shit. the arena afterwards. And they say, man, there are so many comments on there from guys. And they say, if you fucking ever think you're too big to fucking not uh, not clean up yeah. afterwards or whatever, and I've I've helped put up a ring and I've helped you know clean up a, a, a venue afterwards or whatever. I'm not, that's not a boast. That's just like like that is a, that's like a cool respect thing that you do. And for him to do that, this guy managed fucking Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man at the same time. That is that's awesome. No one should be beneath that. That's awesome. No one should be beneath that man. That's really uh, from cool. everything I read. Uh, if you really want to see like great Jimmy Hart stuff, check his stuff out in Memphis. Uh, mm. That's when they say he's like legit, like one of like rival with Bobby Heenan. Did he work with Lawler? Yes, that's what I'm saying. It was like his family would always feud with Lawler. Yeah. So, yeah. Love, love King. Uh, Joe says Jim Cornette as well. Yes, Jim Big Cornette. Cornette but man, he's right an NWA man. Yeah. Uh, and then Rich says, was Iron Sheik at that time too? Yes, he's kind of the one that Hogan beat for the title, mm-hmm. and he stayed around for a while, but he wasn't like a big, yeah, big. Threat, Sheiky you know? baby, yeah, yeah. I, I love the Sheik too. All and right, guys, guys yeah. man, guys, you, you know, you put up some great names that me and CM is. Uh, we're, we're going from the 80s to now, and I can tell you right now, guys, you're gonna have a lot for this next one, so we're gonna get right into it and keep the comments coming because we're gonna keep on going. Whoo, guys, that was quite <laughs> a moment there. Uh, guys, if you ever want to see what is it you guys talk about during the break, uh, go check us out, YouTube. Uh, dot com search just another friday night we're currently at 50 subscribers guys we need 50 more and then we can change our name to youtube.com slash just another friday night or youtube.com slash j-a-f-n podcast uh you guys uh, earlier saw geek out sa gave us a shout out yeah, on their awesome. show they that's go awesome. live on fit on on youtube wow. we're not even allowed to go live on youtube because we don't have enough followers yet so um you know what i mean it's kind of like you know we can't get on the ride because we're not tall enough guys so we need you guys to help us <laughs> tell your friends tell your family just tell them to hit the subscribe button take their phone from them maybe they like us being ecw yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, that little maybe. Niche. maybe they feel like we belong to them look go you get know? your mom's phone go get your wife's phone your <laughs> girlfriend's phone and here's what you do you say can i look at youtube real quick and then you go search us on the friday night hit subscribe and then and then that's it give it back to them that's all you got to do they don't gotta watch that's all i'm saying we just want to get to 100 and change the damn name guys but either way we're back and we're talking all things mania madness Ooh, and attitude, attitude guys we just got through a huge discussion about pretty much what we would call 80s wrestling i mean i know it was for really, wwf for wwf and, and we, we were pretty much talking more like 84 to 91 like like yes. uh double a said here yeah. they called it the rock and wrestling uh era and now we're getting into the era maybe most prevalent in your memory if you're around our age but even if not i know my dad uh you know in his 60s uh has very very vivid memories of this time probably maybe 
either his favorite or second favorite time to the eighties of wrestling. And this is a guy that remembers a lot of seventies wrestling that's, with Yahoo yeah. McDaniel yeah, and, that's and awesome the, the Von Erics too, yeah. uh, which I know you're a huge, you're like a student huge. of that. Cause obviously yeah, we, I love that stuff. you or I wasn't born in that yeah, time, but, but I love that stuff. you've went back yes. and learned it. Yes. Yeah. I, I've not done all my homework, but the point being this time I didn't have to, because I was, I lived it and you lived it and we lived a lot of it. together. We, yes, we did. We would see. Okay. So the lines are, kind of blurry now in mm -hmm. this time period mm -hmm. okay it's not as clear cut anymore as the 80s it's not straight up good guys it's not straight up bad guys now we got the middle we got the anti-heroes all right and and we're also at a different age in our lives a right very you know, different we're, we're, we're a little bit more we got a little bit more fur on our face you know <laughs> what i mean and we're thinking about girls more and we you know we like when we're around our buddies to say cuss words too. You know what I mean? So Monday nights became like a really big thing. CM would come to our house, uh, our buddy Adam, sometimes Mark, sometimes our buddy John. Uh, Monday nights were a gathering almost. And Those nights felt like um, – when your dad would get fights, yes, it felt like fight yes. night. Like I was yes. like, oh man, rest. Like, like you look forward to Monday. Together. Yeah. So now, our main guy that we just talked about, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man. Now they're on the opposite side of the fence now. Now mm. they are the bad guys now. Okay, they're in WCW. They left. Vince is reeling. He's like, you know, he's getting his ass kicked. You know, Hall and Nash. They just left to become even bigger stars in WCW. Mm. You got to create some new guys, man. And there's no one better on his back fighting against the ropes than Vince McMahon. Exactly. When uh, all of a sudden they sneak upon this guy, mm -hmm. you know, Stone Cold. The Man. ringmaster, Oof. formerly of WCW. <sighs> Tough beginnings. Tough beginnings. But man. Austin's story, though, you can hear it anywhere. You can hear it on his podcast. You can read it in, the, in one of his books. It's it's pretty common. We all know the injury at WCW, then the time, yep. the brief time Heyman helped him out at ECW. He called himself a Heyman guy, too. Yes. And then, you know, you get the infamous moment where the, the this shirt becomes. Oh, the hottest selling it, it wrestling t-shirt no, of all it, time. It is, and I think it's actually still holds that honor. It's the highest selling shirt. And we ever. talked about the Bullet Club shirts in previous episodes, whatever. But more so recognizable is this. I remember seeing kids around school wearing it before I was even fully yeah. aware yeah. of the of the promo itself because I might not have caught that one. It that was episode. about ninety six when it when that promo came out. Was it? It was. At a King of the Ring. It was King of yeah. the Ring, 1996. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's famously that guy's feuding with Jake, right? And yes. at this time, Jake is a good guy. Yeah, and he was like into this whole religious kick. Right. You know, that was his thing. The John 316 mm -hmm. and everything. And, you know, Austin creates probably what is considered, if not the top promo of all time, the top three, you know, promos of all time where, you know, where, you know, he's like, you dump your Bibles and, you know, everything. You know, John 316, Austin 316 says, I just whipped your ass. You know, and that you just never heard anything To like Michael P.S. Hayes, right yeah. in front of the throne. He's already Stone Cold, right? He's Stone he's Cold. no more Ringmaster. But, but he doesn't have the music yet. Mm -mm. But that promo, you just, you didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't hear any of that kind of stuff before. And you're just like, whoa. And and it's kind of funny, right? Because we talked about the costumes. We talked about the personalities. And here, here you got a guy. The name, it's still, it's cool. It's Stone Cold. You know what I mean? So that's cool. But it's just a bald guy, goatee, black trunks. Black trunks. Black boots. But you're like, damn, man, this guy like fucking like. But he's not afraid of anyone. Mm -hmm. He's talking shit to everybody. Mm -hmm. He's stunning everybody that's coming in his way. They keep calling him tough, too. Like that word keeps coming out like, man, the toughest son of a bitch. Like you're like, damn, man, I like a fucking like a real badass. And, and so it's funny, Sam, because I did not like the dude at first mm -hmm. because the one guy he targeted out of everyone in the right. business <laughs> was Brett the Brett Hitman Hart. Hart. Yeah, For yeah, some reason. This guy just did not like Brett. Every time Brett was in a match, he'd come out, fucking beat on Brett, cause him a, a win. You know, the 97 Rumble, mm -hmm. Brett Hart eliminated Austin, and mm -hmm. no one saw. <laughs> and he comes back in, and after Brett thinks he's won, he eliminates Brett Hart, and he's declared the winner of Royal <laughs> Rumble. You're like, what the fuck? Man, that's classic. Yeah, like, what and, the hell? And, you know, I always liked Brett, and I can remember liking Brett, but I can actually remember Dilly feeling like, like, ah, oh, man, like this fucking guy is dirty. Man. Like, all like, that. And I remember being like, I kind of like, like, yeah, I can remember getting no, one over. Like, I, I was like, I'm I, 
He's kind of cool. That guy's kind of. I wanted to know I what he was going to do next. I couldn't yeah. like the dude, man. I was, I was Bret Hart, <laughs> man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I get I mean, it. But you know what, Sam? Again, what I liked about this feud is that you felt like these two guys hated each other, right? You know, there right. was just like Austin. The way Austin would look at Bret was just like, "Fuck, this guy just wants to kill Bret." And then Bret gave him that look back, like, "Yeah." Like fuck, you know, you keep costing me my my title, you know. And these and, are the promos where Austin's got the maybe the one big gold hoop yes, wearing yes, the the, uh -huh. the, the necklace, ne the gold uh -huh. necklace, the jeans, and yeah. then just the vest. Yeah. And and you know, uh, pink tights. What the hell is that? You know what I mean? You're like, oh. So when Austin's okay. constantly interfering and Shawn Michaels is shit, Bret Hart slowly starts to become the most hated man. I would dare say in America mm -hmm. because I don't know if you remember that time period, but everywhere else that guy would get cheered. But in America, Bret Hart was your number one enemy. Man, yeah. oh man, Bret Hart just went fully into that villain role, taking out Sean with the Hart Foundation. What a great fucking stable that was. Oh, Davey yeah. Boy, Owen, Pillman. You see the um, picture I tagged you in the great picture? Yes. The, the, the second and I saw generation. it on Twitter. Uh, Pillman Jr. had. Uh, tweeted that one out. That's too. badass, man. I didn't know he had a kid that was wrestling, man. Yeah. That's fucking cool, man. And so you got the muscle with Davy and Anvil. And then you got Owen, the other technician. Then yeah. you got Pillman. And then you got Brett, the one, the guy that everyone always considers the, the best wrestler. Mm -hmm. God, Lee, what a stable that Bro, was. That was fantastic. And man. at one point, I mean, you know, he had the heavyweight and Owen had the IC and Bulldog yeah. had the European. That's right. Belt, you That's know? right. And the Heart Foundation was a true, yeah. Uh, yeah. true powerhouse. But, but um, how weird was that? You know, you're blurring the lines where in the 80s you would have booed Stone Cold. Oh, yeah. And you would have cheered Austin, but now it's reversed. Mm -hmm. You know, then you get a team like DX where Shawn Michaels is going completely <sighs> into back into that, you know, arrogant HBK oh, yeah. with Triple H and China and Rick Rude. And, you know, they're telling you to suck it. You know, I mean, that right there, too. Maybe the, the, the next thing, you know, I, you know, I know we've all seen the meme or whatever where it says, oh, kids these days are doing the dab. Back in my day, we would be doing, you know, suck it or whatever. And you'd get in trouble at school. You for would. Doing that. You, you had, now you were they not had allowed to, to do that. tell you, stop doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And it reminded me of like when you couldn't wear Bart Simpson t shirts at one time <laughs> yeah. in school. And then it was like, not doing that or whatever. You can't be doing suck it. You know, you've got Stone Cold flipping people off every. <laughs> yeah, every, you know, uh, like that. Yeah. Golly. As Facebook takes us down, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But I mean, man, so you had that now going on. You had DX doing that. You had Stone Cold. You got Brett again. Again, the lines are very blurred, mm -hmm. you know, and you're just like, golly. Then you have all these stables. You have the Nation of Domination. The Nation of Domination, in. man. You know? Farouk with the Dominator, man. What yeah. a move. What a move. Seeing guys like Mark Henry, uh, yeah. Kama Mustafa, which yes. was, you know, God, which was yeah, like Godfather. Godfather. Became Godfather. You know what I mean? Uh, Dino Brown. Dino Brown. I mean, yeah. uh, which was cool, too. You know, like, like they were they were all cool. And that was kind of neat, too, because we'd never seen, like, beyond a tag team, like a bigger a stable, stable like that. Yeah. Like, and there were multiple ones. And so that was like pretty yeah. badass. And then we get introduced to kind of one of the, you know, the rock, uh -huh, you that's know, right. kind of starting off because, you know, they Rocky try to Mavia. introduce him as Rocky Johnson and man, he's just not, he's not impressing mm -hmm. anyone. And people again, where if this was the eighties, Rocky Johnson might have been yeah. a super popular baby face or flex Kavana. <laughs> Now you get the same character, and people are just not having this character anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's an ECW influence. Maybe, you know? yeah, um, just a changing of the times. We've talked man. about it in movies when the times change. Either you change with them, or you get left behind. And and WWE definitely did. And The Rock was just, you know what? Fuck you, fans. You know, I'm joining this nation. I'm not. I'm not, you know, I'm not fighting for you anymore. I'm doing right. this all for me. Yeah. yeah. You want to chant Rocky sucks? Well, okay then. You know what I mean? And then, like, that emergence of that man and that character, you're like, holy shit, you're on the, you're on the rocket ship up. You know what I mean? And I can remember him and his ladder match with uh, Triple H. It was like, and again, too, I felt like them two were becoming that good intercontinental yes. mid. And it was. It, it was well, so nice. Even before that, it was Stone Cold and Rock. Mm -hmm. That was pretty hot for that right. IC belt. Yeah. Remember? That is right. For a few That's months, right. yeah. they were fighting pretty hard for that IC belt before it became Triple H and Rock. Yeah, but man, again, the IC belt was still a big belt. It was something that Stone Cold won 
before he moved on to this exactly. one. Exactly. You know? Almost like a natural progression. You've yes. got to win the one before you Rock get to the other it. one. Rock Triple H had it first before they moved on to that big belt. You know? What about some of like, the tag teams? That like, I can remember like the Headbangers, oh, Mosh Headbangers. and Thrashers. Again, more names and more like, oh, that's cool. They wore kilts and they were painted and they would – you know they were headbanging. You know, the you brood, got, the brood. You got the Hardys. You the, got the APA. Hardys, yeah. You yeah. know you got the Dudley Boys coming in not too long mm-hmm. after that. It was like I God, mean again, please. very cool. Still a great tag team stable. Still, where, where you're interested the entire show. Yes. You're interested yeah. the entire show. And I think back then they're only doing two hours. Still, they were doing was, two hours, which, which was is good. perfect. Which back then though we probably would have been like, give us another hour because it was like, damn, and we there were, was so but, much. But you know what? That's when they really focused still on wrestling instead of mm-hmm. making. These soap operas that they have now, yeah, that's based around wrestling. They were actually seeing wrestling. We know? always talk about the moves <laughs> that The Rock would do, <clears throat> even at that time. He would, yeah. be doing, he would do her Karanas. Yeah, he would do that. What we called the, he called it the lay in the SmackDown yeah. DDT, where he would pretty much rotate around your back and then end in a DDT. It was so that athletic was and move. it looked so yeah. damn cool. Rock had some of the coolest boots with like the cutout for the calf. Yes. The way he moved his body, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, but I mean, just like everybody, I mean, like everybody was fired. The New Age Outlaws oh, emerge. Man. The Road Dog, Jesse Again, James, the badass. When Billy they Gunn. first came out, so fucking hated. Mm-hmm. You know, so much put people boot them. I mean, man, but they, I would say, in that attitude era, they're the ones who define that whole era. Yeah. The New Age Outlaws. That was a great fucking team. Definitely, they gelled man. so well together. Really great, great on the mic with Road Dog, oh, especially Road Dog, uh, Billy Gunn, especially when they were heels. Worker. Oh yeah, when he would talk shit on the mic. Oh you know, yeah. before he, you know, they would do the introductions. Golly, what but, about those a couple of those pump handle slams where he was really pumping? You know what I mean? It's just like so <laughs> insulting, and you're like, holy shit, man! Like these guys really go for it. I can remember during some DX promos. Double I don't know if they were plants or what, but there'd be women like freaking flashing would. or yeah. whatever. No, and Triple it, H would tell them. Like, it, yeah, it was you know, like, lift up your shirt. Fucking like Motley Crue, man. Stars. I was like, yeah. like right. and I remember being like, holy shit, yeah. like wrestling is off the chain right now. And as a young man, like in your adolescence, like those years, your teenagers, I'm like, this is the coolest shit. Like, I mean, like it was hot at school, man. Like if you had a wrestling oh, VHS, yes. it was like, it was oh, the man. tape trading, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And hopefully you mm-hmm. get it back in good shape. You know? And I know <laughs> we had a couple of classes where we were allowed, like sometimes, you know, the teacher would be like, you know, occupied. We'd be able to I hang out there that, yeah. and we'd be playing the, we'd playing the, <laughs> playing a tape or whatever. And it was like, you know, we would just be like, this is the shit we'd be eating it up. It was like, everybody was into it. Everybody was watching it. It was the thing to do and the place to be, man. I'm telling you, you know, and and I've heard later on, you know what I mean? Like maybe we didn't relate as well to this aspect, but the telling off your boss. But again, I think we did because it's like telling off the authority figure. That's still something that's like very big that you just wish you can do every oh, once yeah. in a while. You to want to just, just say fuck work. <laughs> yeah, fuck work. Fuck what you're telling me to do, you know. But of course, every time you have that rebel. You always have the guy that's the corporate champion. Oh, yeah. You know, which The Rock uh, really grew into in 1997, 1998. Mm-hmm. 98, 98. Uh, man, what a perfect just rival for Stone Cold Steve Austin. It was, you know, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. I mean, golly, The Rock was so good. And not only that, CM, but we've said – you know, during that time period, okay, you had Austin Rock, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. They even had these guys. Then you have Undertaker. Then you have Mick. Then you have Triple H. Then you have Kurt Angle. Kane. Kane even was like a big main event guy for like three years. And this is what I mean. Like they fit these people all in and it made like the whole show was like. But right there you, know? you got seven main event guys. It was like, God, yeah. even Kurt Angle became a very entertaining, you know, again, where he probably would have been a really good, great guy in the 80s. This Olympic gold medalist, this American model, you know, of. You know, virtue. You know, one of the yeah. biggest heels. It was almost <laughs> like it was almost like Vince figured out the formula once he realized it had switched. Yeah, he was like, "Oh, if I want to make somebody a, a a heel and get them bad guy heat, all I got to do is make them like as a white bread baby face would be like, you know, the good guy carrying the flag yeah. and all that." I mean, he's like, this guy's going to get shit on it. He was right. Beer, it's the milk. You know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, what about that? Double A. We didn't really. Uh, excuse me. We kind of glazed over the. Um, the whole Vincent Man thing, like Vincent Man emerges maybe, as again from what I've read, maybe the greatest heel character, and I've heard this from many wrestling historians. Mm-hmm. Maybe the greatest heel character of all time, the Mister McMahon character. From being in the time we talked about before, a commentator, and I didn't know this. I didn't know. To me, that was, was still all like, the owner. Yeah, I was like, yeah. hey, this guy is the owner. 
In fact, I was often wondering, I was like, why is he doing the, why is he like, he's the boss? I, like, yeah. I, was, I was almost like, is this a character thing or whatever? Yeah. Only to find out like, holy shit, the whole time he really ran, he the, ran show. the show. He was the legit yeah. boss. You know, this is still definitely pre-cell phone, pre-internet. I didn't know. I mean, it was like, okay. And then just, it turns into this guy that you fucking just oh my goodness love to hate. hate like you're like damn man i mean at one time guys this guy was on my mount rushmore of of you know wrestling wrestling, wrestling because characters. you know really in many ways you know of wrestling characters because with or without him i mean you know without re him in wrestling you, you need him in wrestling period because you don't have wrestling as it is today but but even as that character i mean uh that I think sent really Austin like to the moon. It did. That whole feud is always still talked about. You know, the blue collar worker versus the boss. Mm -hmm. You know, Stone Cold versus Mister McMahon. I mean, God, and how he yeah. tried to take the title from him every way he could and the throw ratings, everything he could at him. Yeah, the ratings were just sky high. Having him arrested, you yeah. know what I mean? All the stuff with Austin. I mean, it was insane. You know what I mean? Like it was like he threw everyone he could have. He threw the Rock at him. He threw Mick at him. He threw Undertaker at him. You know, everyone he always just tried throwing at Austin, you know, and sometimes it worked. And man, that's when you get really pissed off, especially when Kane won. Yeah. You know, the I, title, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you would just start hating Vince. You'd just be like, man, Vince, you know, you, this guy fucking God. sucks. And he's the and then, and then we had Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe. Oh, Golly, the those Stooges. fucking guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the other thing was, too, is that, like, you know, you were almost really looking forward to, like, what is Austin going to do to him next? Because he was fucking with him so bad. Damn. And it was like, you know, we all remember the, the hospital incident with the bed <laughs> yeah. and, he, and it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's like it's even then we're laughing like it's comedic. Like we're like, man, look at him like he's beating up this fucking old man. This is his dickhead boss, and you know we some of us might I may have had a boss or a few bosses. I might have been sixteen by that time, and it's like you know this shit was like awesome. But even if not, we had like an authority figure in our yeah. life, whether it yeah. be you know your teacher, your you know guidance counselor, whatever, maybe your parent or whatever. But you could relate to being like, man, I want a little payback yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know. So it just. Fucking worked, and everybody brought it right. Everyone everybody. had the attitude from well, like the said, you have, to you know when you have the tag teams that are trying to steal a show, mm -hmm. or you know, like I say, you have the seven main event guys that are each trying to top the other guy. You right. know, I mean that just that's just great competition. And then we didn't even talk about this, you know, that something that the eighties didn't have. But in this time, we actually have a legit women's division. Yes. That is right. a very influential group. You know, the Trish Stratus, the Lita, China, mm -hmm. Molly Holly, Victoria, those women, you know, Jackie, Jackie those yeah, women are always considered the trailblazers for the women's 100%. division, for impact wrestling, for, you know, the women's evolution that you have now. They were, yeah. you always hear. Sable. Sable, is there, Sable too. Big, but big you always hear like, like for a lot of women, you know, you always hear Lita. Being a big right. influence, you yeah. know the the shit that Lita was doing was something we had never seen a woman do before. You yeah. know the her Karanas, the flips, you know all that kind of stuff. You know the Team Extreme, sure. You know with the Hardys. I mean, and, and then, there could be said that there's maybe some stuff that didn't necessarily age well. And it's not lots it's of bra not, and panty matches yes. and lots of talk about that. But you know, again, it's but of the time. But they had know? the matches though. They had the WrestleMania yeah. matches. You know where like the Trish Mickey one. That oh, was right. great. Yeah. Great storyline. You know, that whole buildup and that match was hot. That was a hot Chicago match. Yeah. Uh, the fans were really against Trish on that one and they were really behind Mickey on that one. Do you remember that? I one? don't remember that one. That, that one, was yeah. like, that one has a loud reaction. Okay. You know? So that was, I mean, but the women's division, they lit it up. Fit Finley, mm -hmm. you know, trained all those women. Yeah. They always He's consider, great. yeah, mm -hmm. they always consider that, that period just like one of the best periods. So, and Jazz, I forgot about Jazz. That's right, Jazz. Yeah, you know, who so. who uh, runs a school out of San Antonio? Yeah, she now. does. Right, right. I think it's called the Hybrid Hybrid School. I, I think believe. so. I might yeah. I might be wrong. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But. but I mean, man, so you had that. You had the tag teams. Like I said, the you know the the tables, ladders, and chairs. You know the Hardys, the Dudleys, the Edge and Christian. Edge and Christian. Oh man. my goodness! You know when we first saw it at SummerSlam and then at WrestleMania, uh, we saw it at SummerSlam, and we were yeah. just like, that was the craziest thing. We had ever seen. So We're just badass. like, wow, what so the badass. fuck is all this? We have never seen, you know, what is thirty foot ladders or whatever it was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, we were like, man, these guys are gonna fucking die. Like we were just like, what the fuck? Like this is so insane. But I mean, again, that's what we mean. Like, like attitude is the perfect 
name for this era because it seemed like that like everyone was edgy everyone was cool everyone had something about them you know even the brood you know what i mean like being the vampires or whatever before edge and christian you know split from that but the way the hardies were these young guys they, they, they reminded me so much of the rockers, the rockers. but like but for yeah. that era and um you know i mean like the dudleys you know like i said coming from ecw we knew they were like these guys from this like rogue you know promotion uh, promotion yeah. that was like where well, crazy shit happened so we didn't know what to expect from them and uh there, there's still quite a bit of kayfabe still existed where they we did still, no it did because in the thing you stone Cold would not let you know that him and the rock were friends right you know or right. triple h would not let you know that you know he was you know pretty good with undertaker you right. know you didn't know any of that. You just figured all these men hated each other. Yeah. And there it goes again. You know, it's that competition where you're each trying to just outdo the other. Exactly. You know, because at this time, you're still kind of making money from the event, right? Yeah. I mean, totally. you still have to talk the fans into wanting to buy WrestleManias. You still have to uh, talk the fans into coming to the venues. Yeah. I mean, they were doing 20,000 seats, like easy, you mm -hmm. know, selling out like crazy within – you know, hours the the event would sell out. You know, yeah. Uh, you wanted to see Stone Cold. You know, you wanted to see The Rock. You wanted to see Triple H. You know, you wanted to see all these guys just come in and beat the shit out of each other. You know, no, one hundred percent, man. I mean, like the the we those, went to so many of those events. That was probably know? be I would say the height of us kind of going to that like a lot. And uh, I mean, man, it was just like really can't and, miss wrestling. Can't miss. I don't know if you, you feel this way, but there's a lot of times I read articles and they always kind of mention like The Rock was like the biggest thing. And I was like, no. Yeah. He didn't even come close to Austin. No. Like it was a clear Austin was number one and then The Rock was number two. It was very clear. Those pops that Stone Cold would get were some of the loudest fucking pops you would ever hear. Yeah. I mean, golly, once that glass broke. You know, it was like everyone was just like, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it just seemed like everybody too. They even kind of rode with them when he tried to go bad. It was, yeah. like, it still was like these people were just still on on the Austin bandwagon because that character did something so much more, and it touched on so many more things. Again, with the whole like authority figure thing, it's like they're never going to forget those aspects of your character where it's like you're the anti authority uh, author authority. I'm authority, say, authority, anti-authority figure, and you know you're like you know you're like our guy or whatever. And it's not just that; it was like you know even in WrestleMania 13, when he was bloody and Brett had beat the shit out of him, mm -hmm. and he has him in a submission move. A normal bad guy from what we have seen would have always tapped out. He didn't tap out. No. The guy was like a no quit kind of character. And yeah, again, that kind of a character that you didn't see from that kind of character. Right, you know, this guy is still gonna try and come and whip your ass. Yeah, he's not gonna be like begging you, like no, you know, right? Not that kind of villain no. or whatever. You this know? was a no, new kind of like bad guy be that became an anti-hero, you know. And you're just like, wow, you know. It was very cool, man. I remember having the Austin. I think I still have the VHSs, the Austin three sixteen. I, I have a few and, of the VHSs uh, still uncensored, and yeah. I I bought the Blu-ray, the one that came out recently, that nice. most recently that was that. I, that I, I yeah, whenever there's a Stone Cold uh, DVD, I I'm usually on it. You yeah, know? Uh, uh, I've Undertaker. Said it before, you know, what do you feel Undertaker. about Undertaker on Attitude? I mean, he changed uh, like about three times during this. Yeah, period, he did. Know? He did, and it was uh, you know, Taker's always Taker, but I mean, he was. Uh, awesome. I mean, in different he was like ministry taker, yeah. and then he became like the American badass and taker. Like, there was like the corporate ministry too, where he kind of got under yeah. Vince. Where one yeah. more thing he had that, that Vince, long beard, remember? yeah, <laughs> and it was like one more thing Vince was trying to do to get like another get thing at that he tried Austin. throwing at him. Uh, they did the whole crucifixion thing, which is controversial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, but no, taker yeah. was great because this is also the time that we're getting like this, like the introduction with like mankind, more stuff with Kane, like the boiler room, like the. They're like the Barry Light family. matches, yeah. the boiler matches. Yeah, the Paul yes. Bear stuff the with coffin. The, them three almost had their own little yeah. like universe kind yeah. of going on, and it was very yeah. cool. That's where you got the all of that fleshed cell. out. Hell in yeah. the cell. I mean, yeah, gosh, how iconic. Yeah. I mean, forever in everybody's mind, that video talk about people talk about on TikTok videos that live rent free. We can just think of it and see Mick going off that fucking yeah. cell. And being and hearing Jr., you know, my God, my God, yeah. man. somebody stopped the damn man. I mean, we were all like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck just happened? Like, it was insane. And it then, was you know, insane. How about Mick too? Like, you know, looking back on it, see him. It always seemed like he was that test for every new guy 
You know, yeah. for when it was Undertaker, when he needed kind of a refreshing, he sent Mick. Yeah. Stone Cold, when he became champion, Mick was like the first guy. Right. When Rock became the champion, Mick was the first guy. Yeah. When they needed to make Triple H a main event guy, they sent Mick. Mick yeah. was always that guy that you can always kind of count on to, you know, kind of like, okay, let's see what you got. Let's right. see what we can really push you. The test. The he was almost the like the test. test. Yeah. If you look at it, he was always kind of like that first main event guy that the champions would have. Cause that was kind you of know? part of his character that he was like super durable, super oh, tough. Yeah. Like it was, to you had to beat the shit out of him yeah, in you, order you to, to win. Him. And it was funny. I think that was like one of the things in the game is that like, yeah. you had to like beat him real bad. Cause to his pin fucking him power wouldn't even like, it would barely go down. Right. He'd be like, damn man, I already hit this guy with the chair yeah. and everything or whatever, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of a cool aspect yeah. they made into the game. But yeah, I know that you're, uh, <clears throat> you're, you're, one step up, older brother uh, Will Friday Nighter Will was always really into when he first came out with the brown yes. suit, yes. and that's when he really was like fucking. He was. he was a little bit more lean. He was lean, and he was yeah. definitely badass. And I remember seeing the mandible claw move, and I remember he, being like, "Man, that's like a fucking gross move." That like, was another guy like, I was that like, I couldn't stand because every time he kept att attacking Undertaker, and mm -hmm. he would beat the Undertaker. I had never seen someone just like yeah. thoroughly dominate the Undertaker yeah. like the way Mick would. You know, when he was fighting Yokozuna, it was like 20 guys needed to come out to help. Right. With Mankind, it was just Mankind. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. And that like, symbol this guy, was weird on his back. This guy's beating Undertaker. And, yeah. And Sitting then when Paul corner, Bearer turned on him, I was right. like, what the hell? Remember, he pulled out the hair for real. Remember, <laughs> yeah. he yanked out his yeah, own damn right. hair. We, you met him too, right? Did you meet him? No, you. you, oh, you okay, I think you Yeah, I met him. Yeah. And, and he's. Fucking big. He's yeah. like uh, he's like, six four. Yeah, when I when yeah. I was uh, standing next to him and I'm fucking short, so he was like we were like yeah. I'm standing and he's sitting and I was like, but so, of course, obviously we all know Mick now, Mr. Santa Claus, super nice and lovely. But uh, but man, that was uh some freaky shit. Like in that time, I was like, man, this is like a kind of a weird character. Well, man, you know what a great time. We, like I say, we still believed in these characters and yes. they were characters. Yes, there were you know, characters. And yeah. you still Edge, believed you know? it. Yeah, you still believe that they all hated each other. There was a big competition for all the belts. Mm -hmm. You know, for the IC belt, for the tag team belt, for the heavyweight belt. You wanted to be the best in no matter what division you were in. And you could you watch. Know? You could watch and be. You know, following like you'd be like, oh, I want to know what's up with like the Intercontinental yes. storyline. Yes. I want to know what the, the tag storyline or what the Hardys are up yeah. to or whatever. Like it was, it, it was very fluid and easy to follow. It and was. you knew like you know these guys are fighting for this, these mm -hmm. guys are fighting for that, and and you know, and and obviously your world title picture. So that made it like uh, palatable and and easy to understand and easy to follow and just and more enjoyable in a way. And like I you said, I mean? when you have about seven main event guys, mm -hmm. you know, just anywhere like. You can have Kurt Angle versus The Rock and that'd be entertaining. You can have Triple H and Undertaker and that'd be entertaining. With Stone Cold and Undertaker maybe main eventing, you know, or yeah. you know, just any kind of like combination your, and it will your, work. How many number one contender matches did we see? It, that was almost like a title match because it was like, man, I want that guy to yeah. win so he can get a shot at the belt. Yeah. Like it, it that match becomes important. This That's title saying, shot match. Yeah. Or the winner gets a title uh, uh you know to be face the guy that's yeah. gonna be the number one contender. And you're like, Angle has a shot. Triple H has a shot. Yeah. Nick has a shot. Rock has a shot. Undertaker has a shot. You're it's like, almost you know. its own title, just being yeah. a number one contender. Yeah. Uh, but guys, we are rapidly through the through the Attitude Era now and up at our uh, our probably our second to last break. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking we you know we never know, but we're gonna take a break right now in a few seconds, guys. So uh, I see more comments have poured in. Uh, I see some of you guys are still hanging out, enjoying the wrestling talk. We cannot wait to read them. Of course, you know we do this every Friday night on just another Friday night, and we invite you to join the conversation. So let's take a look right now and hear what you guys have to say. Guys, if you're joining us Facebook Live, I know I say it all the time. Oh, but, shit. It's but, even more but, so. <laughs> but we didn't go anywhere, guys. Damn. We didn't go anywhere. Uh, so we're here with you. We're hanging out. We're talking mania, madness, and attitude, wrestling, and uh, – no one hears this on the audio part, but of course, if you want to hear the full hear the full story, you can see the full story and hear the full story on <laughs> YouTube. Uh, go search us just another Friday night and hit subscribe. Ooh, and wait. don't forget what I told you guys. We're at 50. We're halfway there. I need you to get your kids' phones. If your kids don't have phones, go get your kids' phones. Damn. Get them phones, create them YouTube profiles, and then subscribe on those profiles. <laughs> your friends, your family, you're going to see people this weekend. You're going to say, hey, let me take a selfie of us, but go to YouTube and then get on Damn. there. It, it, might, it might take a little bit long. They might notice, but 
you'll figure it out. We trust in the Friday Night Faithful. We know you guys are going to get we us there. Trust in you. So, uh, Double A, without further ado, so many damn comments. We got to get right into them. So, I know you know we, that CM Chuck's going to have trouble scrolling up to begin with. So, there's that. Uh, uh, I always have that issue. Keep going. Keep uh, going. Keep going. But we're going to get up here to the top okay, of the comments. Okay, we're going to uh, invite you to join the conversation. Go down. Get right into the talking points right, here. We're lucky. Uh, okay. There we go. Uh, okay, Jerry, Jerry in the house. Oh, what up, Jerry? Jerry D. Uh, he goes, wish I can join, but I'm putting the kids to bed. Yeah. All I can say is no holds barred to me is the raddest wrestling of the Amy's. <laughs> well, the Rocky wrestling was pretty rad, too. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Appreciate that, Jerry. Totally rad Christmas. Go check out Jerry D's wonderful podcast. Uh, and we're even on an episode, a yeah. Cats episode. Lucky says, was Sergeant Slaughter first crossover character? Uh, oh, you know what? Maybe so. You know, yeah. I think I first kind of knew Sergeant Slaughter because of G.I. Joe, really. That might, I, that, I might be the same way, too. But, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, look, I, I don't know. But uh, I don't know anyone else that was, like, a G.I. Joe and then also in, in the wrestling. So. And then, uh, Man, just, I, you know, I need to read the story why that all happened. That's curious. That's cool. And then Lucky says, Zeus. Zeus, definitely. And Steve says, I know it's just because I'm old, but no Mascaras. Uh, oh, no Mascaras. No Mascaras is badass. A legend. And he yeah. kind of appeared throughout the different eras. You and know? if you go to a luchador bar, they have a big ass painting of no Mascaras. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Steve loves a luchador. I got a chance to take him there a couple of times. So definitely uh, good call, Steve. Joe says, uh, Lucky, now watch this with Jerry and Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rich says, Who would be the Godfather of wrestling in the Attitude Era? Oh man, this I guy. think it's got to be this guy right By, here. Not even a mark, not even a slim margin. It's Austin, man. Now, it's now cold. okay. Well, well, I'll let us get through. Then I have, a, I have an interesting thought. Maybe. Okay, uh, Austin had a good story how he came up. Yeah, I mean, he busted his ass mm -hmm. to get where he was at. Working, uh, working over at the Dallas Sportatorium. He yeah. always talks about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe says the A and E bio was awesome. If you haven't already watched it, it is great. The Stone Cold A and E biography. I need to, watch to check that, that one. Out. Okay. Okay. And the Shawn Michaels one. They that did was a, a couple really of wrestlers. Okay. Yeah, uh, they've done Shawn, Stone Cold, Macho Man, or Piper. Okay, I got to get on the uh, on the on demand there and pull those. Uh, Lucky says Goldberg. Goldberg, WCW. Look, yeah. yeah, we're talking just WWF right now, but uh, that's definitely an interesting topic for a future episode. Yeah, we can maybe talk NWA versus uh, the WCW Nitro days. Yeah. yeah, the Monday Night War. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, Joe says it's two. It's to the classic story, which Triple H was supposed to go over, but got in trouble because of the yeah. click and Stone Cold got pushed. Which, yeah, that's right. The hey, curtain call ended up better for everyone the else. The curtain call changed everything, man. It could have been Triple H 316. Uh, Rich says Stone Cold didn't want to be in a tag team with Pillman. He wasn't happy being known as Hollywood Blondes. It was kind of a situation where they said Dusty told him that he was going to be going for the U.S. title, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden Pill Pillman comes up to him and says, hey, man, we're going to be a tag team. You know? Yeah, that's right. I remember hearing yeah. that. I remember hearing that. Uh, Joe says the Austin Brett match was the best. I mean, you know, that's iconic. Yeah, that's iconic. That's iconic one. I, I love him and Sean. Uh, although I know Sean was hurting, and they say that some people say it wasn't that good. Some of a match. people. I, I liked it a lot. I, Which one? I rewatched Sean and Austin. Uh, uh, you know what? It's it's when uh, Stone Cold throws him, and Sean kind of like does, does that. his. Move that's that's where he's fucked up he's after fucked up that one. Yeah, yeah. I still like it though. I just think it's a good match. It, it feels big. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, feels it, big. it definitely did to me. So I'm. It's I a like big it match. A lot. Feel. Um, uh, Steve says, "All right, first lightning bu lightning bug of the year." Yes, I'm hanging out in the backyard. That's right awesome, on, Steve. Steve. Man, good old lightning bug. We would use them if we were kids. We'd just crush them. Use them as predator yeah. blood on yeah. us. Now we're gonna have FEMA coming after. Is it FEMA? Oh, shit. Telling us the, the that we're har harming the bugs. But that was when we were kids in the '80s watching. Hulk Hogan, we would do that yeah. with the predator blood on you. All right, let's scroll down a little okay, bit. Okay, let's get a little bit further down here. Uh, Rich says, uh, Bret Hart got screwed. What was the reason why Vince did that to him? Well, Vince would say, Bret screwed Bret. It's, it's at the time where it was still the title meant something. You know, it, it really did. It was yeah. still a big deal. And you know what? He, was, he wasn't afraid that Bret was going to take it. He was just afraid that Bischoff was going to somehow get his hands on the belt or say, you know what? Hey, we just signed the current WWF heavyweight champion. Right. And he's with WCW. And you I know, think, I I mean, think what's that, more embarrassing than that, right? I think that Brett did say he would drop it, but he just didn't want to drop it in Canada. They right? just it wasn't it was in Canada and Shawn Michaels. He didn't want to drop it to those two guys. 
that yeah. those two things. I, I <clears> can <throat> see because I have heard Triple H say this too, where it's kind of like you know you don't really get to say like. So I kind of don't agree with Brett but on why that. Why did they have to keep Sean? I mean, but you know what? You know what? I did hear Cornette say because it had been advertised already a few months before, and it was at the time where you couldn't really kind of go back on it. Well, it's also too like this though. Like if your boss tells you to do something, you do right. I mean, so it's kind of like, hey man, I'm giving you like a little bit of carte blanche, but like now you don't want to drop it to Brett. Now you don't want to drop it in Canada. It's like, well, hey, like Vince said. Brett screwed Brett. <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree with Vince. So I, I love Brett. I really love. He could have done. He could have done anything though. Vince could have walked out there and been like, "I'm stripping you of the title because whatever." You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. you know, but well, fuck that. I mean, Triple H did say it really good. I thought, and it's like, hey man, this is our job. This is a business. Like, play the game. This is what we're telling you to do. Yeah, whatever. Play the game. You know, nice. you know, yeah, play the game. <laughs> that uh, was unintentional. That pun. But Anthony says, "Toughest SOB, Stone Cold Steve Austin." Oh hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, Joe says DX come along and they push the boundaries even more. Yeah, they do. Uh, Joe says they had game things going on for a bit. They did, uh, you know, yeah, for a while. Yeah, I remember. I remember the DX and the Nation feud. That yeah. was really cool. You know what I mean? And Heart Foundation. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and the Hearts. Yeah. Uh, Rich says, "What do you? Who do you think was the best wrestling fra- faction? Faction. Uh, if we're just gonna stay WWF, who would you say? I'd say WWF at that time. I'm gonna go DX. DX. I'm gonna go. I'm DX. gonna go Heart Foundation." That, that's that's definitely the most uh, in ring ability, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, and then those guys can really fucking wrestle, man. All, yeah. all of them, even Natty. I love Natty. Yeah, she, man. If she was better on the mic, I mean, but she could just be... say you have Brett as a champ, and then you have Owen as IC. Mm-hmm. I mean, golly. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I've said this the whole time that Natalia's been wrestling. I'm like, she should be. You could have a really great program with her I and know, Charlotte. You could. You, she should. She should have a good program with any of the four. Chicks that they always put, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, she oh, needs Bobby Heenan as a manager, <laughs> yeah, or Jimmy Hart, or Jimmy Hart, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe says the Rock Triple H feud was really one of the best DX Nation Nation feuds, yeah, it was. definitely agree. Hulk Hogan in his prime versus Stone Cold. Who do you got? Richard says, uh, double A, like different, yeah, man. I don't know, 87 Hogan maybe versus a 98. Here, here's Stone how, Cold? He, here's oh, what I, here's man. what I know. Oh, who, who do I got then? So it's like, who goes over? Here's how I write it. I write it. I write it with ref gets knocked out. Hogan's gonna go over clean. Uh, then uh, he goes to get the ref up. Uh, Hogan uh, uh, Austin does something dirty to it. Low blows him. Stunner. Ref wakes up. Austin goes over, but not not a clean win. Dirty. I'm win. gonna say Austin with the clean win. Wow, Austin with yeah. the clean win yeah. and the changing of the guard. Because yeah, Stone Cold never really won dirty. Yeah, that's a you good know, point. That's honestly. a good point. But against um, the immortal Hulk Hogan, I'm talking about '80s Hogan. Anthony says too cool at Rikishi. They that was that was a thing. They were very popular. That was too. a very popular thing, and sadly, one of them passed. Right? Uh yeah. Uh, uh Lawler's Lawler, Lawler Brian, son. Yeah, Brian. Uh, Brian, uh, Brian Christopher. Uh, Brian Christopher. Brian Christopher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rich says, "What about Double J? I hated him with that damn guitar." Yeah, Double J. Hey, we hey, we Rich. Were... It's J A Double R E <laughs> Double T. Or here it's J A. F N E O D C A S T. I have actually met Double J because what really you met yeah, Double J? Yeah, because I mean he's he, he's important to wrestling. He really is he good. Uh, good guy. Like in like yes, he is actually. He was a real nice dude. And everything. He was cool. So I uh, meet him. I I like Double J. Uh, I liked him in Owen and Deborah. Deborah is. Oh, I, I I have no doubt. Austin's ex. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Joe says one of the best live shows was either ninety eight or ninety nine. I mean, that was peak uh, WWF right there. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, no doubt. Joe says he saw Raw here in San Antonio, Stone Cold and Cell. That's the one that we yeah said we, we were at. The, we agreed we were that we there. were all at that show together. And uh, then he remembers Austin's Royal Rumble win here yeah. in San Antonio. That's I don't where, think uh, I was. He you screwed were at, Brett. Yeah. yeah, were you at that? One? I was not yeah, at that one. He screwed Brett on that one. Uh, Rich says Vince was the greatest bad guy. I think it created these iconic good guys. I mean, Vince has to go down that Mr. McMahon character. Yeah, that Mr. McMahon character definitely was so awesome to the point where he eventually puts the belt on his fucking self. I'm like, <laughs> uh, it's like, what a power move. Like, talk about power moves amongst power moves. I mean, uh, uh, Joe agrees with you. He thinks Vince does belong on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Um, and he had the physique too. Like, we didn't really talk yeah, about that, but, yeah. you know, this wouldn't have worked if he looked like, uh, you know, I don't know, Tony Khan. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it works because he looks like Vince, so it, yeah. when it works, you know what I mean? Uh, Joe says Vince's Stooges were the best. Man, Pat totally. Patterson and Briscoe, man, great veterans. Oh, dude. yeah. Yeah, and you said uh, Briscoe, a real uh, hooker, right? He is. Yeah. And Legit Andrew, dude. Jerry Briscoe really fuck you up, Legit man. Dude. Yeah. If, you, if you messed up, so that's it's kind of cool that they still got to be a part of a really iconic era. Yeah, you know, uh, but you remember when they would come up with Hulk Hogan's music? You uh, really yeah, I did. Would... I did. They really <laughs> hammed it up. And you know what? They probably had a blast. They did a, a, a last hurrah in the yeah. spotlight for them. But these guys, legit good. Don't forget. Uh, you know, Pat Patterson, the first Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. I mean, so these guys were really. And he would really, wear that shirt too. Yeah, for his IC yeah. champ from Brazil. That's real. That's the thing. It's so tongue in cheek, right? They were so tongue in cheek about the fact that these guys were legitimate, good, <laughs> really good wrestlers, or whatever. But now it's like, hey, what I, I saw a clip see him on on Twitter. It was like, uh, it was the three of them, right? They were telling Sable to like leave the ring or whatever, and Briscoe's holding the the rope for Sable, and EC Patterson comes out and he pats her on the ass. And she comes back and fucking gives him a monster slap. And you just see the crowd pop, man. Just <laughs> it was. I started laughing. How funny for it to be him that does it too, yeah, right? Yeah, you know I mean? and that's like, probably why they picked again, him again. More, it's, you know, so, it's but, more so much, so much more tongue in cheek. But man, it's that, so funny you know? just the way you know he gets slapped and the people just pop. I mean, yeah. that's just great stuff. And credit to him because they also laugh. say. I laughed hard. They say that him and Vince wrote almost everything. They did. Right? It Just was only those two. two guys, man. That's you know? amazing. All the great shit we're talking about. That's two what I'm guys, saying. You don't you know need writers I mean? like they do now. Just get two guys, man. Yeah. Uh, Joe says to Shane, double cross Stone Cold. That was great. You remember Survivor Series? When yes. When Shane turned out to be a fucking asshole? Yes. And then that's where the Rock won? That's the right. I time. do remember yeah. that. Yeah. Rob says, I'll, I'll take it from here, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so cool. That's right. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, very awesome, man. Uh, Rich says, who would y'all be y'all's Mount Rushmore? We wrestling? have a whole episode about this, Rich. We do, actually. Yeah, Rich, and, yeah. and uh, mine has actually changed since the Undertaker episode, but I believe that mine is... Uh, mine was very old school. <laughs> Go for it, though. Uh, mine was uh, <laughs> the Nature Boy, the original Nature Boy, Buddy Rogers, Buddy Rogers. Uh, Luthez, Ric Flair, and Hulk Hogan. That was my Mount Rushmore. I believe mine is Hulk Hogan, uh, Steve Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, Sean. Uh, I believe I had Sean, and uh, it at was Vince time, McMahon was Vince. Yeah. at the episode. But after our Undertaker episode, I moved Vince down and put Taker up on there instead. Which on this show, you'll find me make several changes to my lists yeah, on fine. this show, uh, of course. Uh, Joe says, Mankind really was one of those guys that made a lot of the guys that big. Austin, do love Rock versus Mankind, mm -hmm. Triple H versus Mick Foley. He made these guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, he yeah. was always that first guy he threw at the main event, guys. Definitely. You know? uh, Rich, put me your list in the comments of your Mount Rushmore. And speaking of Rich, he says, "What about when Stone Cold stunned Stacy Cleep? Stacy Keebler, Keebler, yeah, I really portrayed that. I mean, who didn't he Definitely. stun? Yeah, oh, I yeah. know. I loved it that everyone got stunned. I forgot about Stacy Keebler, Tori Wilson. I had the yeah. opportunity to meet Tori Wilson at an old like uh, oh, sure. car nice. show here. Nice. Here, it was actually in the dome or whatever. Nice. Uh, super nice. Oh, I think I remember when those we had those shows. Yeah, I have that. That's yeah. like an actual photo I have of me nice. and Stacy Keebler. And oh, not uh, uh, Tori Wilson. Me Tori. and her, my dad." Uh, Lucky says Buff Bagwell. Man, man we were I'm huge Buff fans. Yeah. And I'm the stuff. Me and CM love Buff. We've man. got a great we're, picture. Yeah. Uh, not together. It's double A with yeah. and Buff. And then there's me with Buff. But, but I've me, got a and, me and CM love Buff. We would always do the stupid poses. He oh, would yeah. Do, the hats. The top hat with his own face <laughs> airbrushed on it. I mean, yeah. like, what a gimmick. Uh, and he went on to do porn. So, yeah. There's uh, that. Joe says. Uh, oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, scrolling go up too a little fast. bit. Uh, go up a little bit. Hold on, guys. Sorry, I got the I got the I got the scrolly fingers here and right there, right scroll right too there. far. Uh, Joe says, "Hell, Stone Cold still gets those pops." Uh, mm -hmm. Rich says, "For me, the match I enjoy watching till this day is when the invasion is going on with WCW and ECW, when Stone Cold comes in and saves Team WWF oh, and I do stunts that. some many wrestlers." Yeah. Uh, Joe says, "Stone Cold early was crazy hill. He developed a rattlesnake DTA. Don't trust anybody attitude." That's right. And then he goes, "Oh man, the wrestling games were classic on the 64s. Yeah, we played plenty of those, we did. man. It is. And uh, yeah, we played that that uh, what is it? Raw it was called Raw, I think. Uh, right. Raw's War Game also yes, on yeah. 64. Yeah. And uh, man, that was like a, a staple, man. It just got played. We played the shit out of that and game. Then Joe goes, uh, the tag teams were great again. The Outlaws to Dudleys to Hardys to Edge and Christian. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. A, a great tag team division in that time in the nineties. 
Uh, Rich goes, what about Randy Orton? I think he has that psychological style like Jake the Snake. Do y'all agree? Uh, not on Jake's level, in my opinion. In my opinion, more... I can see where he's going, though. Because yeah. Because Randy does kind of deliver those kind of promos. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan of his wrestling style. I think it's boring. I do like when he just... Out of nowhere, does give an RKO though. Yeah, that is I like that. Too. Very cool. I like the RKO as a move. He has a lot of good moves that I do like. Um, just something about him, right? That we never really gravitated. Yeah, there's something about him. Yeah, just I don't know. Like he never really like just didn't get all the way over. I do own one Randy Orton T-shirt or whatever, and I mean I dug the Viper thing and uh, you know a great physique and and obviously been there for forever now. I mean like Randy's done his time or whatever. It's just. You know, man, it felt like when he feuded with Cena, it was like it felt like it was forever. It felt it's forever. Like, you yeah. know, I feel like Randy gets in these feuds and they're just forever, and it's like I just get worn out. I felt Triple like he feuded H with Triple H forever. Triple yeah, H that's the other one I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, geez, man, like this is like worn out. And again, great physique and great. great I, I remember we smooth. used to we used to yeah. joke. We used to say we'd be like, man, fuck, was he have something on Vince or something? Because this guy's like in every damn match. I mean, like it's like out of nowhere we're gonna end up seeing Randy like win the Rumble or some shit. I'm like, really, dude? Like, okay, like. I mean, you're still good and still viable, but I mean, I don't know. It's just like it's too much. I don't know. I, I, or maybe it's just him that he never got over with us like that, where it's like you could never have got enough Austin or never got enough Rock, yeah. but we definitely yeah. had enough Randy already. So uh, Joe says Vince couldn't afford Brett, so he had to let him go. Brett wanted to hand over the belt. Mm. <laughs> and then Lucky says Sloppy Joe, the Comic King. Hey, man, Sloppy Joe, I don't like it. I told you, I told him, go with Joe Chill. Because I said, number one, he gets the comments built in with the Mr. Freeze. He yeah. likes Batman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so there's that. Uh, and then he he says, uh, again, break came up the class of league from the tag team to IC to the champ. Yeah, that's uh, true. Then he says, Albert's not going to like uh, that con con. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably not gonna yeah. like that. Uh, but I don't think he's watching right now, the dickhead Albert. Uh, <laughs> Joe, uh, you gotta see. You gotta tell Lucky when he calls you the comic king. You gotta say no. This is Sloppy Joe sauce right now. Oh shit! You getting the sauce right now? I made this comment in the other. Damn. <laughs> All right. Okay. Rich says, "What about Bob Backlund and that chicken wing submission move? That was a crazy. That was that's a, crazy a really move. good submission. It is a good submission. And uh, there's another guy that is a really good technician in the ring, right? Bob Backlund. Oh yeah, Bob Backlund, noted noted shooter. Uh, it's another guy you don't want to fuck with if you're uh, ever in that position. If you're ever <laughs> wrestling a guy that doesn't wear knee pads. That's not good for you. He was the champ at the time up. that, you know, WWF still needed, like, a real shooter just in case someone tried getting out of line. Mm -hmm. And Bob Backlund was one of those guys that you can depend on. Yeah. And uh, you know what? That kind of, like, over-the-top, like, bow tie like character was kind of a, a interesting character but they like, kind of led know. into right where we're talking about, right? Like, the attitude. Maybe right. where that character where he was from was popular. It wasn't popular anymore. Yeah. You know? Like, Kurt Angle, yeah. you know, Olympic gold medalist. You know, it would have been big in the 70s, 80s, but not anymore. <laughs> and it's very interesting to kind of like, you know, s spin that almost like you're, you've you got to build up the last wall of that that people hate. And then you totally yeah. break it down when you bring yeah. in the Attitude Era. Uh, Joe says Bruce, too. Uh -huh. uh, Richard says Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, Ric Flair, and Jake the Snake. It's his Mount Rushmore. Man, very Jake. nice. Very nice Jake. putting Jake That's on there, man. A non, a never held a title, but still very influential, I think, in many, very many ways. And one of the greatest heels, bad guys of wrestling ever. Rich says, "Which what is y'all's favorite finishing move and submission finishing move?" Ooh, that's tough. Uh, oh, for me, the sharpshooter is yeah. always just my favorite finishing move. I, I like that one a lot. Brett too. would just slap it on because he, he knew nine out of ten times he was going to fucking win. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm going to go with Sting and the Scorpion Deathlock. I like it better. Uh, and slightly. the finishing move, I maybe Tombstone. That move just looks devastating. Tombstone is uh, really great. I, I'm a big fan of a move that you can do on anybody uh, because uh, I probably couldn't pick up somebody. You know what I mean? So uh, I do love the stunner. It is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, I love the pedigree, too. If there was a number two, probably the oh, pedigree. Oh, that pedigree is good. Yeah. It looks cool. cool uh, Rich says, who do you all feel was a wrestler who got overlooked? Where do you start? I mean, we kind of talked about him, but I do feel like Jake, perfect – uh, oh, they should have had at least, yeah. you know, because at least Rick, at least he got uh titles. I see WCW, no, but in WCW, oh, right. he was actually the champion, yeah, you know. Uh, Jake could have definitely held at least one title. I mean, that's definitely 
he, that should have right. been. I, I'll go, Mister Perfect. You're 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 pretty spot on that one. Yeah. Mister Perfect got overlooked bad. I feel I feel like there was a lot more. They, they could have even you could have had like a year long bad guy run, and then you build to a big, uh, you know, the hero overcomes. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Uh, even if they're winning dirty. Um, what do we got here? Um, Joe says, uh, who? Something so, about Briscoe took uh, Briscoe some people took people down. down. Uh, Joe says I was a Scorpio Deathlock guy as well. Joe uh, is it? Uh, Joe says uh, always like the rock bottom. Rock bottom is a cool move. I definitely like the rock bottom. Uh, and then Joe says uh, Scott Hall. Oh, uh, Scott Hall. That's never had the, one, right? that is a great. That's a great that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Figure four and the center for me. Very nice. good calls nice. on those, uh, Rich. Um, and now, Rich, I'm going to throw a question out to you guys and the Friday Nighters and all the Friday Night Faithful. Now, earlier, and, and you as well, Double A, earlier, Rich asked, uh, would the 80s have been, the, I guess, the 80s without Hulk Hogan? Could they oh, have yeah, built yeah, it? Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Would the 90s have been the, the 90s without Stone Cold? That's before, another, I would say no. Before you answer that, the reason why I would say yes is Ooh. because I would say that the reason why Rock does not outshine Austin is because Austin is there. But without Austin there, I think you still get the Rock. And I, I still – now, there might not have been an Austin 316, but maybe we're wearing, you know, know, maybe we're wearing the lay in the SmackDown shirt too. You know what I mean? Like that would be my opinion because it was like two mega stars firing up at the same time or whatever. And, and Rock really only got like a little bit more of that back in, not, not that much. You know what I mean? So – uh, what do y'all think, though? I'd like to hear that. Uh, but, guys, let's get back into the the last leg of this, I think, is going to be the last part of the recording here. Yeah, yeah um, it will be. So pretty much we're, right now we're just going to kind of – Kind of wrap it up, yeah. I guess, as, yeah. as what we would say here. Uh, we're going to so, bring it home. Gonna right? bring it, we're going to bring it home. Bring it home, as I say in the rest of this. So keep uh, keep commenting. Keep talking with us. We want to hear what, more of what you guys have to say, what you think, and your final thoughts – uh, on mania, madness, and attitude, as we're talking all things uh, 80s and 90s uh, WWF wrestling, because it was just the WWF at that time. There was no no uh, WWE yet. So let me get us back into our audio portion here, guys. Thanks for hanging out through that blip again. If you ever want to catch the full, uncut, unedited Raw show, uh, you can go to YouTube.com. Uh, search just another Friday night. Uh, find us by our little microphone logo. It looks kind of like this right here. And when you see that logo, it'll be on a white background. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, preferably do it on someone else's one if you've already subscribed to us so that we can get that <laughs> extra subscription. We're about halfway there to the 100 mark that we want to get to. Not bad. Uh, not bad. Yeah, not bad. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. So that's pretty good. And again, guys, we're talking all things uh, WWF wrestling right now in the, the 80s eras. and 90s, yeah. the eras. Yeah, what they one called the 80s, what, what you would dub the 80s more or less decade, but the rock and wrestling era versus the 90s, very well-known attitude era. Uh, even the logo changed, right? Uh, they sure did. It went from the they kind sure of did. very the blocky, classic. iconic, you know, yes. right here, WWF. Yes. WWF. To the really scratchy. The, the scribbly, you know what I mean? And the, the entrance changed and everything. It truly was attitude. So um okay, Sam. So we've had some really good breakdowns mm -hmm. uh, and the comments too. Excellent uh, comments. Okay, uh now we kind of decide uh which one do we think is the better era? As I like to say, and I have been kind of forgetting to say, but I gotta get ready for the in this moment concert double A, but adrenalize me. What do you think? Okay, so as far as like the characters go, I kind of like the 80s characters a little bit more. Okay. Uh okay. again, it was just more clear cut. Mm -hmm. And you know the villains were just a little bit rougher yes. at that time. You know, yeah. Uh, Storylines. I again, I might have to give it to the eighties. Wow. Okay. Uh, the storylines were just really great storylines that build up to WrestleMania and mm -hmm. kind of ended it there. Uh, I don't know how you feel about the storylines. Um, now uh, the overall yeah. wrestling, though, I'd have to give the wrestling probably to the nineties. The attitude. Okay. I'd have to say maybe the wrestling was better. You had smaller guys, better technicians. You know, Steve was a really good technician. Still, yeah. though, Rock could really turn it on when he had to. Right. Uh, Triple H, we all know Triple H can wrestle. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Sean, you know, Brett, uh, you know, those guys were much better than, I guess you would say, like Warrior. Hogan, right. You know, Andre, right. you know, so, you know, people like that. Uh, so, the wrestling, I have to say, attitude. Okay. Um, obviously, the women were just. <laughs> Well, well, they were there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, tag teams, though. 
this is one I always Ooh, kind of struggle with because, tough. man, I love those classic tag teams in the 80s. And I mm-hmm. might have to give it to the 80s, man. Yeah. I might have to give that one. Now, the mid-carters, though, who would you say maybe is a mid-carter? Oof, I'd have, again, maybe have too. to go attitude on the mid card. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. So when it comes to characters, I think that you're a spot on 100% with the oh, 80s. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think there was right. a more richer um, – kind of uh it is character driven you know okay. what I mean? there was okay. even if you were like you know a plumber or whatever that you right. were you know I mean? you yeah. were something you know what i mean um that adds to the kind of the character or whatever but um then what do we talk about next storylines story for lines. me now i'm going to go 90s okay uh, again because i mean what are some storylines that really took you um well again the McMahon like austin the mcmahon austin definitely DX uh nation dx nation even rock and nation rock where and the nation. rock turns yeah, on, on yeah. farouk um you know even um uh like we were talking about the paul bear kane uh undertaker Their mankind stuff yeah, yeah that like you know what i mean there was a lot that went on with that okay. during that time i think we okay. kind of uncovered all that taker kind of lore or whatever okay. the brother and the brain so all that was really neat um a lot of the stuff like you said like with the women was going on they were kind of building and fleshing out their own story yeah, all we well. really had in the 80s was uh sherry and elizabeth right about it right yeah. right and, and so for me that would be that um what else did we talk about tag team tag what teams. would you say is tag team uh now i'm with you on the 80s really on this one. okay yeah, i okay. think so they were like bigger guys more well known more well established not that okay. the size mattered or whatever but no it but it. I, no yeah. i just felt as though like those were like larger than life again characters and tag teams um you know although they they did a really good job in the 90s it might have been the last really good era of tag teams okay you know? uh what about your card if you had to like take out your tag teams and your main event who would you say had a better card would it be the 80s the rock and wrestling or the attitude era man it's tough because again i felt like these is a, this is a time when if you're watching wrestling you can watch it and watch the shows the whole way through and still be thoroughly entertained because they did such a good job of establishing like hey in this first you know 30 minutes to 45 minutes we're going to be talking about like that maybe the tags then we're going to be talking about like who's dealing with the ic belt yeah. then it's your main event or yeah. like at the end of the show yeah. uh it was very structured almost it like was a play. it really was you know what i mean yeah. and so um that's that's tough to me um it, I'd have to go with attitude just because of all the main event guys that we yeah. said. You know, yeah. it was just there's too many of them. You can I, see a Kurt Angle match. You can see a Triple H match. You know, in that middle card. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm gonna, be satisfied. I'm going to agree with you because, like I was saying earlier before the break, was that in the '90s you got a lot of even like number one contender matches that were just as exciting. You could end a Raw on a number one contender match because it still had ramifications. It still had value even though there wasn't a belt on the line but, but you knew it was going to be for the next thing it was a great way to set it up you know what i mean um and you could always you know kind of backtrack and be like you know now you're going to fight for your you have your number one contender shot but now you got to face so and so they beat you they become the number one contender yeah. you can yeah. keep kind of bouncing that around yeah. you know what i mean so now you did ask a question earlier about about mid card guys and i think you said you went 90s uh yeah i'm going to add to i would actually go 80s really for me yeah see i wasn't a big fan of like hacksaw Okay. I'm not a big fan of like Martel. Yeah. I like Martel, but right. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of seeing like Tito. Tito Santana. You know, the Red a, Rooster. Exactly. Yeah. When, when I have the mid card over here, you got like guys like Val Venus, the Godfather. Right. You know, again, right. Kurt Angle, Triple H. Goldust. We didn't talk about Goldust. Gold you know what I mean? Yeah. Goldust, a uh, major part of that attitude. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And even a little bit before. You know, yeah, he was in that too. kind of he that. He was that the one wall. that was bridging. You know yeah. what? I, I could see where you're coming from. I could see where you're. Yeah. I guess because I thought that maybe the bad guys were better in that mid uh, card. Maybe like it's like you had your your perfect, your Jake, your mm-hmm. ravishing recruit. Uh, you know, um, and I, but I, and I'm also thinking about guys I did like like JYD. Like I like Junker or Dog, and he didn't really ever get out of the. He never really got out of that mid card. No, he did Even though he, you know he came over, it was like he just kind of was always stuck there. I know he was a big star of Georgia, right? Yes. It was like a uh, uh, mid south. Mid south. Yes. And he was like a, a champ, I think. Uh, like, big. He yeah. was big. So yeah. kind of sucks for him to have come, and then it was like never really got off the off the blocks. Uh, but uh, I guess I think about those guys. You know what I mean? I think about like uh, what was his name? Uh, bad Bad News. Bad News Brown. Bad News Brown. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, uh, Hercules. Yeah. Um. Uh, Again, another big guy that was huge in Miss South, yeah. but really didn't do anything in WWF. You know, you know, Dino Bravo. They said was huge in German, Canada. Dino Bravo. No, but they, you know, he was like he was like they could have said that if Vince would have pulled the plug, I mean, would have actually shot it. 
that him and Hulk Hogan in Canada could have had a 40,000 main event Holy sellout shit. Wow. because that's how big of a star was. Dino Bravo was in Canada. No kidding. But Vince didn't want to do it because he was afraid that Hulk Hogan was going to get booed oh, in Canada. Interesting. So he pulled the plug on that. But I was like, wow, you know, that's something like you brought Dino Bravo in because he was such a big star in Canada. And now you're not going to use him when wow. you do, do the, when you do the Canada shows, you, you know, you know, it's yeah. Like, Come on. What makes me kind of sad <clears throat> double A hearing that though, is like when we talked about JYD, we talked about uh, a guy Bravo. that was big in the South. Yeah. It, it's you know? somebody could argue that even back then Vince was burying guys. You, know what yeah, I mean? you can say that because like Martel, he was AWA champion. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Haney was AWA champion. Yeah. You know, JYD was huge in mid South. Uh, Dino Bravo, huge in Canada. You know, it's like, golly, you just bring these guys in and, and then you don't do nothing. Like Harley Race, even when Har Harley uh, Race yeah. is in there, it's like, really? Yeah. You know, you're they're AWA, right? AWA. NWA, NWA. Like the, the main NWA. guy the main for the NWA. NWA. You know, it's like, come on. Yeah, bro. man. Uh, that's kind of tough to think about it. You, you know what? You might have, you might have swayed me. Maybe I'm thinking more like now that you know, that it would have played out better in, in the, in the mids. And, uh, I, I didn't think about, you know, gold dust and, and, uh, Val Venus. Yeah, and all those that, guys, yeah. that was, that was, Val a Venus was entertaining. He was oh a yeah. Entertaining wrestler. Yeah. And when they teamed up, that was really funny that too. Cool the too. porn star and, and the pimp, pimp, you know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, and then we also, you know, in both eras, we did have those missed big WrestleManias, mm -hmm. you know, for the rock and wrestling when they finally got Ric Flair, yeah, we should have had the Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. Yeah, and we didn't. And then in the Attitude Era, we should have had Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan, and we didn't. And it was missed both times. Yeah, you know? and it was just like, golly, what could have been? What could have been at WrestleMania eight? And what could have been at WrestleMania eighteen? Yeah, you know, that's I, some real dream matches, real fantasy booking, right? I've there, always man. told people, you know, when Hogan and Rock faced off, and it was really Hogan. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have been like that with Stone Cold. I really think it would have been half. Yeah, totally. You know? It would have. Been, <clears throat> I agree with you. But then we get that great match. That really is the match between the Attitude and the Rock and Wrestling. We get Rock and Hogan. Rock and Hogan. And we, yeah. we were there. We saw it. Me and you were there. We had a big party for WrestleMania mm -hmm. 18. And, man, we were just, you know, we <laughs> – we were getting emotional, you know, yeah. with Hogan because, like, he was supposed to be NWO Hogan. Yeah. But the crowd is so into Hulk Hogan, Hulkamania Hogan, that even Hogan starts doing, like, Hulkamania stuff yeah. again, you know. They couldn't believe it. Man, they couldn't believe we, it. Were, we were just like, damn. Like, we were, we were getting really behind Hogan for, like, the first time in years where, like, Man, we turned back into like Hulkamania. Big time. You know? How about the instance of, of the fact, Double A, that you know we're watching that and that's happening, and it's like, um, you know, they're they're not doing that much in the ring. Like they're, they're not. not doing, it's not, it's a, not a really great match, but, technically. But, wise, no, but, but what is great is like when they lock up and Hogan just. Throws yeah. rock and then he starts posing. Yeah, I mean, you just see the crowd just pop. I mean, man, they're just going insane. And man. that is, a and then he even does his, you know, his mm -hmm. what he hadn't done in so long. And yeah, he couldn't help it. He got into, and that's a hallmark of that. This is that character from the eighties being so lasting through the years. You know what I mean? But like, how it, cool it is that truly... that we got that one moment where oh, yeah. his rock is pretty much, you know, it's like we said, Austin is a clear number one for the attitude, but yeah, you couldn't have gotten a better number two than the rock. No, absolutely to go up not. against the face of all that eighties. Yeah. You know, it was just amazing. Yeah. And I definitely feel like it's not a situation where it was like uh uh Batman and Robin or anything. It was it was like a Batman no. and Superman thing. It, it was yes, like, it, it was, was Hogan like Superman dynamic, you know, and you know rock Batman. You know, and it was yeah. just because I think that he's you know, at any one time one could have, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it could have maybe gone, you know what I mean? So like I said, I do think that, you know, had there not been in Austin for some reason, or whatever that I still think that the attitude era would still happen with the know, Austin, CM, I know uh, I know it's tough. That's a tough because you know? it had to be someone like Austin to really push those boundaries, even yeah. for like DX to come along. It had to be because of Austin. Uh I I don't think if he had a stone cold I I don't know, honestly. I don't know that whole attitude error would have been okay. Now, now, out I, of the two, out of Rock and Austin, like whose promos do you like better throughout? Oh man, The Rock. The, yeah. it, there's just no one that could really, <laughs> you know. And I've seen Flair's like Flair's a great promo. Oh man, yeah, and Dusty's a great promo. Yes, man, but man, I have never seen anyone 
that comes close to like the rocks promos there's never a time that i'm scrolling facebook or Man. anywhere and they come up i'll just watch them and i send them to my dad and you know aaron his, b and his dvd set is the only one where i've seen where it's just straight promo yeah, promo section <laughs> And that's it, you know. Yeah, uh, man. I mean, just like when he would like wave his hand, like when he would tell people like to shut up. Mm -hmm. He's like, the people are chanting the Rock's name. Yeah, and man, they right on cue, man. The people would just be like, Rocky. That's Rocky. in the zone. I've like, never seen anyone that has control of the crowd like the way the Rock mm -hmm. did. You know, one hundred percent agree, man. Millions and millions. millions. I was like. Whoa. Like, I, I mean, all that became catchphrases. I mean, like, you know, SmackDown. SmackDown is SmackDown because, because of, of that. Because of the rock. Yeah, because of the yeah. rock. So, um, I mean, guys, what a conversation. CM, uh, Hard to real quick, I, uh, yeah. Any fantasy matches you would like to have seen? Alive or dead? Um, you know, in Prime. It's like how we said, like, Prime Austin, Prime Hogan. That's definitely one. Uh, I agree with that. Um, I would have liked to have seen, like, Rock versus Warrior. I would like to have seen that, that would have been cool. That would have been cool. I guess the other one I think of, but I'm maybe getting out of my ears, is uh, uh, would have been maybe like um, Austin and Goldberg. Oh, because that would have like, you know, that would have been like the. And one we thought we, we were we might have got to see that. Yeah, we thought we that. were going to. Yeah. yeah, that never uh, happened. I guess yeah, again, that's again. I might be getting out of you know WWE uh, F, but like you know Taker and Sting, whatever you know what I mean. That been cool. So that would have been uh, definitely cool. But what about uh, tag teams? Any tag teams? Maybe Hardy's Rockers. Yeah, uh, that'd be awesome. You know, I'd uh, love to see that. I would love to have seen that one. Would have been really good. Uh, maybe the Dudleys and LOD. Ooh, see them go yeah, at it. You yeah. know what I mean? Or even them and the Dudleys and uh, Demolition. Yeah, they, Demolition. They had yeah. that attitude. I tell you, if you go back and watch WrestleMania six after mm -hmm. Demolition beats Andre and Haku, the pop they get. Yeah, it's one of the biggest pops that night. That dun, just shows dun, you dun, how dun, popular. Dun. Demolition were at one point, you know. Yeah, they're very cool, man. Yeah, they're like they're like Kiss in their time. That's what I'm saying, man. man. You, you look at those reactions you're getting, and you know people like to bash them and say they're LOD ripoffs, right. but man, the the response they would get all the yeah. time is just big pops. You know, is people love them. Yeah, you know? for sure. I think I would have liked to see maybe two more like, uh, you know, Hogan having to kind of you know run the gambit against guys like Jake and Perfect yeah. and yeah. Rude and like. Hey, can you imagine know? Prime Jake? Yeah. Versus Undertaker. Oh man. Like so like not late nineties Undertaker when he was when actually did. doing promos. Yeah, few, yeah. No, but when he when Undertaker would actually talk, oh, right, not Paul right. Bearer or talk for right. him. When right. Undertaker can actually you know do his own talk. Yeah, that God would have been cool. That would have been really cool. There were definitely some some you know missed opportunities and stuff we you know we can't see now. You know what I mean? But. uh I mean, damn, what two great times for wrestling. You know what I mean? Am I right? I mean, yeah. I mean, and you know what? We're lucky enough to kind of really, really see like the attitude era, you know? Yeah. And, golly. You know, again, you know, every Monday night we're, you know, we're together a lot of times mm -hmm. and, you know, the pay per views and just the responses that we would always see. It was, it was fucking amazing. It was no, great. Totally. Was man. Great. And I can't think of two better eras like for us to like have like kind of lived through wrestling yeah. guys. I yeah. mean, for me, like I said, one one portion led by Hogan, one portion yeah. led by Stone Cold. I'm and like, with man. different philosophies, right? Oh, yeah. The DTA, don't trust anybody yeah. compared to, you know, say your, your prayers, prayers, eat your vitamins. vitamins. You know, it was like, wow. You know, you know, for me, both these guys are on my Mount Rushmore. There's two guys I love because one represents the 80s. I mean, one represents the 90s. Oh, you know what I mean? And again, it's not like, you know, I, again, I wouldn't call Austin like uh, how I've called Hogan Superman and called him uh He Man. I would not call Austin that. I would no. call Austin though, like how much I love like a Wolverine or yes. the Punisher. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where I'm like, you know, you're that kind of guy yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, no, when Hogan, it was different. The that 80s was just so different. Yeah. You know, everything was just so much bigger. Definitely. You know, definitely. But, um, yeah, uh, Double A, should we go into comments for the final 15 sure. minutes here? Yeah, uh, sure. Did we you have any, any other no, final no, thoughts? No. Things you want to think about? Just, uh, you know what though, man? They're just two great eras. I love them. I love we them love, both. we love wrestling, man. So that that stuff for us is 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 both badass. Uh, but let's get into the last bit of the comments before we close it out, so we can read what everyone's got to add and say Gotta regarding uh, the. Uh, oh, uh, tell me when, right there. Uh, concerning oh, right the different right eras here in the nineties and eighties. I don't know. Nineties with Austin wouldn't have been enough. Uh, That's Joe says yeah. that. Uh, Joe says we're calling in the ring. Uh, <laughs> Always, brother. 
Rich so yeah. it says, I would say no, Stone Cold is the person you wanted to be. His character felt real. He's like Spider Man or Marvel. You can identify with him. All right. Interesting. I like that. Good uh, answer. Rich says, Who is a guy now for wrestling? I don't know. Roman Reigns? It's really no one, honestly. Is there a, they, is there a guy? They don't uh, build Joe, anymore. what do you think about that question that Rich asked there? Is there a guy now that like the kids want to be? Like, do you want to? Do you want to be Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns? That's the thing, man. They, they're, it's such a big company now that they really don't base it on one person. Yeah. Anymore. Again, they're trying you know, to go with the whole no like, one person. Yeah, is the, it's like the company, the whole. right? You're there to see the WWE now, right? Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, even like my nephew, I would have said before, if you had asked that question about four years ago, I would have said Cena for sure. Totally. Cena yeah. for like 15 years was the guy. Even my nephew, who's only seven, he's going to be eight next next month. Is like you know, that's like the one wrestler that he knew was John Cena. Cena, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But he's been gone for what? Yeah, he's been gone two, a while three years already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with double. I don't know if there really is a guy. Um, Joe, uh, you'd be the one to ask. Joe says top to bottom, attitude arrow is the best. Uh, okay, Richard says I agree. With, he goes, I agree with double A. Story was definitely the eighties, and wrestling was attitude. Mm -hmm. But I say tag team would be better in attitude. Okay. So Rich says attitude, uh, tag teams are better. That's a good answer. Good answer. Uh, Joe says the thing in the 90s had more variety in the main event scene, leaving a lot of good mid card matches as well. 80s was Hogan and everything under. So, right. yeah, saying That's true. more variety for the 90s. I, I get that. Uh, Rich says, okay, pick your 80s wrestler versus attitude era wrestlers for championship. Who wins? Same for IC and tag. Okay. So my card would be oh sorry no no, no go ahead okay. go so my heavyweight will obviously be Stone Cold and yeah. um uh, and uh Hogan okay uh, Hogan I, I agree with that 100 percent that's mine uh, too for the IC it have to be um uh, Rock and I, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go Macho Man you know that's what I wrote down I I literally wrote uh, that okay. down right now sure. uh, uh Rock and Macho Man so and, that's mine too. <laughs> And for the tag team, it's uh, man. I really would like to see Rockers and Hardys. Yeah, uh, that, that has to be my tag. That team. feels the most even because I want to pick Demolition or LOD. But I, well, you know what? I'll, I'll mix it then. Go. go I, I love that Rockers and Hardys. Uh, that would, would be what I wrote down. But to mix it up, I'm gonna go. Let's go Demolition and Dudleys. Nice. For That's me. a great one. And uh, for me, you know, uh, and I'm gonna make it a fucking tables match. <laughs> me, uh, Austin goes over. Uh, oh, okay. Macho goes over and Rockers go over. I'm gonna say Hogan goes over, Rock goes over, Demolition, and Dudley's. the Dudleys go over. Okay, shit. that's right. how I that's okay. how I would do it. Uh, back in the 80s, uh, even without belts, we love these characters. That was the thing, like, Jake didn't need a belt for a long time, Piper didn't need a belt, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, Joe says Rock Hogan. Was for me Hogan's last great match. He had a pretty good match with Triple H afterwards. Uh, it wasn't too bad, but okay. yeah, I would have to say that's for sure is Hogan's last like great great match. Yeah, yeah. I get you on that one. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, it's picking up a, a lot now. Right? You hear? Yeah, go yeah. up a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Uh, sorry guys, let me know if you guys are hearing the, uh, the fan thing, or whatever. I've kind of been hearing it in my headphones, but I don't know how much it's picking up for y'all. Uh, we should be okay. Oh shit. Uh, let me see here. Back up into the comments. Uh, Right there. Uh, Jericho debuting with The Rock was classic. You know what? For me, I wasn't a big Jericho fan. How did how did you feel about Jericho when he came? I wasn't a huge Jericho fan at When all. he first got there, I was not a huge fan at all. Because he was just all. cruiserweight Jericho. Yeah, he felt know? to me like a, like a WCW mid-carder. Like he wasn't even a guy that was like the top of their thing. But I knew he had like a But then a you're pushing him though, was right? But then yeah. when he gets there, it's like well, right away they, he's he's in the field with The Rock. And you're like, what right. the fuck? They brought yeah. him in like one of the – like he was like a top guy over there. And I was like, well, he, that's not how they treated him. So it felt kind of weird for – yeah. It's like a, like a mid level guy to be coming into this like you know bigger thing. So I don't know. I, I didn't really get it at first. But, but. It, it it became a classic moment. Yes, it absolutely uh, did. Yeah. Joe says Triple H versus Rick Rude is his dream match. Okay. Uh, Joe agrees that Demolition were over. Okay. Uh, Rich says I would have loved to have seen Jake versus Mankind. Man. Oh, now there's something very interesting. Yeah, I, I like that, Rich. That would have been a great. Uh, one. Joe says Macho Man versus Kurt Angle. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. That definitely would have been a lot of athleticism in that one. That'd been very good. Rich says I would have loved to have seen the Warrior versus Stone Cold. That would have been interesting. Yeah, that, that would have been, been an interesting. interesting one. I would like to have seen that for sure. Joe says I thought those Bucky's guys were solo and Chuck's Mount Rushmore. Uh, I don't know. Oh, 
<laughs> He's talking about the Young Bucks. Oh, the Bucks. Okay. Come on, Jay. You know you know their names. <laughs> Matt and Nick Jackson. Come on. <laughs> Uh, Rich says Warren Horseman versus DX. Ooh, Man. that's very nice. Man, they couldn't uh, do it to Flair, though. Uh, oh, no. Flair, Flair, shit. You could have, there's hardly anyone that tops 80s Flair. Oh, when yeah. you look at that man, that man is like the, the epitome of like evil, like bad guy. <laughs> You know, he said the he said the standard for the, the no, begging and the low no blows. There's no bigger bad guy than Ric Flair is in the '80s, especially Horseman Ric Flair. Forget it. Joe answers our question about who the guy is, Rich. He says Reigns is the guy right now sure. in WWE. Agree sure. with as Cena was the last big guy. I guess you can say that. It's just it's really hard because they really don't push him like he is the main guy. I think if I know? showed my nephew a picture of Roman Reigns, he'd be like, I don't know who that is. Damn. So, uh, Joe says he was a jerkaholic. Yeah. All right. Yeah, right, right yeah. on. And Rich says he's not a huge fan of Jericho, <laughs> especially now in AEW and that fall in the small cage onto the car concrete cardboard floor. <laughs> I definitely that was don't. Bullshit. I, I definitely don't like the shape that he's in right now. I mean, he looks kind of bad. I don't know Jericho, but he's I even that rock star life. I did, I did, I did love his podcast, and I did get a lot of respect for Jericho. You don't just turn it off, man. Is it, is it, I've been hearing it a lot. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm the fan. Um, it, it was weird. Like, it started like to hit something and it started like pick up the more. Mic. Like, oh, and I was like, man, it's like, it's like really whipping in my ear. Okay. Yeah. But, anywho, uh, is it, I don't know, it's like a sensitivity change or some shit, but I don't know. Sorry, guys. It you seemed heard like that it. Last. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was fine the other time. But, yeah. Uh, anywho, that's about fans. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is about wrestling. So, no, no, no. I did really grow to like Jericho quite a bit um, and respected him and realized, you know, what he did and that, like, you know, I guess you could say he was like maybe like a, a successor to Sean, predecessor to Brian. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm fine with him, but I'm he's like a guy that it's not going to make me like drop the remote. You know, uh, okay. he's not one of those guys like, man, like Sean, you know, with Shelton Benjamin, that was a great match. Uh, yeah. You know, when Triple H uh, fought Kozlov, do you remember Kozlov? Mm -hmm. Stinker. Boring match. When Vladimir Triple H, Koslov, he left double double E. When Triple when Sean wrestled Koslov, man, way better. Yeah, way way better. It's just yeah. it's you know Jericho is one of those guys. It just I I never felt it. I never felt it in WrestleMania 18 <clears> when even <throat> Triple H went at it at the yeah. main event. <laughs> I'm just not a Jericho fan. Man, I mean, his last run in WWE with uh, with Kevin Owens, Owens I list. thought was really good. He looked really good shape. Uh, it was a, the listing was really I thought on point. Like I was like, that's it's a good thing. Like, it's funny. It's a good gimmick. And again, like um, again, I, I kind of got into admiring him as a podcaster too. So that made it he's fine. Yeah, the podcasting is great. You know? Like when I I've heard him like outside of the ring. Yeah. He's a great dude, but yeah. man, I just felt like he did not look good in AEW. He looked like way too heavy, like not cut. I don't know, certain guys like look how way Edge came back. Like Jericho does not look like that. And then, and like, then the, I've heard too, like know. he's still trying to do stuff like when he was in his twenties, and it just doesn't look good anymore. Uh, you okay, know? it looks slow. Yeah, you know, yeah, you kind of got to reinvent your style for like you know yeah. maybe your age. Like Taker kind of was a really a good good yeah. at that. More yeah. striking, yeah. more you know getting a submission on the ground. Yeah. You know Stop what I mean? flying, like, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Right, yeah, you're not going to be doing like that that little lion salt bounce thing he does anymore. You know, like I, I don't know. I, I haven't watched too much of it though, so I really can't say for sure. But it just as I've seen how well, he looks from, doesn't look. You that know, good. from the pay per views I've got with Mario, yeah, uh, nothing really impressive about him. He didn't do anything with Kenny Omega that was anywhere near what Okada did with him at all like not even close like so <laughs> i mean just other than it's his name is he's Jer chris jericho or whatever but uh yeah i've met him you know he wasn't that nice that's but. right that's right for the cd sign yeah for the cd sign yeah. i have i have a, a fozzy cd so you know i guess i don't hate him that much but uh, uh i want to i want to hear your thoughts about this one that rich has okay uh, he goes do you think that hating the boss like in the attitude era would do great in the 80s oh that's interesting that is interesting um, um what do you think? Man, I don't – you know what? I think so. I think it would have gone still kind of good because you still kind of had – that's just been a classic trope throughout history because you have even like – Fred Flintstone didn't like his boss. George Jetson didn't like his boss. I don't Homer know. Simpson it, didn't like the boss. It seemed like in yeah. the thing for the 80s was that you wanted, like, everyone seemed to be like that yuppie character. 
Oh, okay. that everybody was like the rich. Like that's the way the horsemen came across. That's the way DiBiase came yeah, across. They yeah. were the yuppies. Is the, is the eat the rich attitude too? Yeah, you know? it was like they didn't. People didn't like. Yeah, you know, that that wasn't. Uh, I don't even think uh, they were thinking about like bosses. The bosses, just the yuppies. You know, mm, interesting. So maybe it was more just like blue collar versus white collar. Sure, you know I mean? so which is still it's kind of like the same, right? I know. Well, kind of, but you're. I think you're right. You're making a good point that it wasn't so much that you dislike. Like, you know, the Dusty boss. was because Dusty. You can say Dusty and the horse. It was kind of like a, uh, a, a, you know, the early signs of an Austin versus right, right. you know, Dusty, the son of a plumber, yeah, you know, the blue collar guy against the four horsemen that had all these models waiting for him at the hotels, their private, and jets. it was like, I guess, like construction guys didn't hang out with like Wall Street exactly. guys or whatever. Exactly. It's kind of like the way it was clicked out back that's then. That's the way it was then. So, okay, uh, that's a very interesting. No, that's very interesting. You know what? So. I don't know if I answered your question good, Rich. What do you think? No, probably wouldn't have gone so. over as well. No, I don't think so. I think you maybe got to paint it a little bit different and it would have gone over uh, maybe differently that, to do it right. Like maybe not necessarily the boss, but just like a, you know, I don't know, like the, the yuppies. Well, they did have IRS back then. You know, IRS. <laughs> Erwin R. Scheister. That worked for Ted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bray, Wyatt, Bray Wyatt's dad, right? Yeah. Bray Wyatt's dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there you go. I wish Bray Wyatt would get rid of the fiend and come back as uh Wyatt R. Shyster. That would be a better oh, character geez. than the Fiend. Or why doesn't the Fiend become the IRS? You know what I mean? So uh Joe says kill Steen kill. That's a bad actually. Uh, I never Joe got says, to this. Bro, Isaac gonna be real mad. Leave AEW alone. <laughs> uh, Rich says I think that's why WWE will always be the best. They have done it all. Whether what else can these companies do to be original? Uh and then uh bros uh, Joe says bro Albert's gonna be mad leave AEW alone and joe goes uh high flying limousine riding that's right jet and flying joe says dibiase was that, that heel. heel for sure for sure uh guys we are right at another break so i can't do my well can i do the closing yeah, that quick? It, okay yeah. i can do the closing quick. great episode guys thank you so much for all your input you know there's two things that we'd like to say before we get going and that is one if you got something that you want to achieve go out there and seize the day guys do it just like the hoaxer did it, like Stone Cold did it, Austin 316. And guys, um, what's the thing that we say? Double <laughs> uh, uh, do whatever it takes, guys. Do whatever it takes. Austin had to do it. Uh, the hoaxer had to do it. And Vince had to do it, guys. So make sure that you do whatever it takes. For myself, Sam Chuck, and Double A, this is later. just another Friday night. Good night. Okay, we're still streaming live here. So you're like, man, why were they rushing? We were just rushing to get that last 30 minutes of the <laughs> audio done. But we're going to uh, carry on here with you guys because well, you're still Rich commenting. Is very great episode, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. We appreciate Thanks, it, Rich. man. We're still here, guys. We didn't go anywhere. Again, for the YouTube watchers, you'll get the full underbridge. But yeah, we were right there at like seconds left. So I'm like, we'll just end the audio there and then have to record another 30 minute block or 15 minute block or whatever. Sometimes, you know, guys know I go over and I do like, I'll do like a seven minute. Well, you don't see what I see, but I'm piecing it all together. You know what I mean? Like in the block. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, we're still here. We're still hanging out. I still got a little bit of beer left. So what else guys, what do you got for us on our way out in this? We're going to call it uh, uh, JFN after, after dark, oh, right? That's shit. what they did on WWE <laughs> yeah. after dark. So any final comments, guys, anything like that? We're going to go double A, any final uh, thoughts? Joe, like uh, 80s or 90s, Rich, 80s or 90s. Anybody else that's hanging around with us, 80s or 90s? Double A, I want to hear you, 80s or 90s? 80s. A you, you only get to watch one, 80s. 80s. I'm going 90s. I, I, I just I, love the characters more. In the I 80s. know, I know. And I don't really think that you get one without the other. You you, they needed each other. You they, 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 well, Obviously, the '80s didn't need the '90s. The '90s hadn't happened yet, but the '90s did need the '80s. You, you need that to be, you need that foundation, need that to, foundation. Build, yes. to build on certainly. And, and again, a, like what I, what a great foundation Hulkamania built. Totally, and like I said, Vince found the formula once he realized, sure, like, man. oh, they don't like this no more. Let me give them a Kurt Angle, which is almost so funny because, like you guys said, it's like an '80s character. Damn, this is dirty. Uh, I can't see anything. <laughs> uh, you get that character, and it and it is like. It's going to be an automatic heel or whatever. But again, like we said, the times change, the attitudes change. You know what I mean? Like this is the way it, it's almost like a snapshot of American life. This is how people felt, you know? Yep. So uh, Joseph's kidding me says the eighties. Uh, Joseph's another great one. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Uh, Joe, what are you drinking? I know you're drinking because I think you caught Albert Isaac earlier. So, <laughs> all right. Now what? Now what? Now, now watch this right here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, guys, hey, uh, 
Go check out Geek Out SA <laughs> episode. They gave us a shout out. When it comes crashing down. And That's it right. Yeah, there you go. I mean, man, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Uh, I have a Hulkamania shirt, but I wouldn't rip it because it's the only one I have. And I don't Damn. think you can get them that easily Damn. anymore. So is, is Hulk still on WWEshop.com? Uh, have any of us been on? I don't know. But I remember a couple times me and your brothers threw around the big rubber figures. And that fucking shit hurt. I remember getting <laughs> hit with that Hogan a couple times. And I was like, oh, fuck, that rubber Hogan. So, guys, uh, tomorrow, Ekman's yeah. Card Comics yeah. Collectibles Show. Over at the Shrine Auditorium, 281 and 1604, flip some books, find some action figures. Do you guys still collect? If so, what do you collect? Adrenalize me, adrenalize us, and just another Friday night. What are you, what are you rocking tomorrow? Are you wearing JFN t-shirt? Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. wear one, too. I'm going to wear one, too, and I might be wearing my new yellow and gold hoodie, repping my EC colors. Oh, on the, I mean, I don't think it's going to be cold. That's probably very no. hot, right? No, don't even think about it. You know what? I'm going to look into JFN tank tops, guys. We need oh, to go for it's summer, right? Okay. We're going summer. Okay. Maybe some trunks. Can I get trunks? Ah. Probably not. Probably not having all the trunks. But. All right, guys. Um, we do got to get out of here. Though. It's getting late because then I got to go put all this and make and it we got to wake up early and make it into a hole. So I got a. I'm being a chauffeur tomorrow morning to Ekman's. Mm -hmm. So not not me. I, I think I'm going to get my own lift. I think so. We'll see. Uh, actually, a few people asked me to take them. So <laughs> I was like, all right. Sure. So double A's caravan in it over there yeah. tomorrow. So uh, Joe says, I mean, Saturday night main events were. were. Uh, yeah, they yeah, were. They were. They were definitely worth watching, man, for sure. So. All right, guys, but uh, serious sign off here the next time. Uh, Joe says, need just another Friday night koozies. Definitely. And there it is right there, guys. The, the title here held for the Just Another Friday Night podcast. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as the world champions, but maybe there's someone out there that wants to challenge for the title. We don't know. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, Joe, JFN koozies. We're trying to get my, get my work done on that. Uh, once more, for myself, CM Chuck, <laughs> and for this man here, Double A. Double A, Adam and Adam, guys. We will catch you next Friday night right here on Just Another Friday Night. Good night.